everyone. I yeah, and welcome to D and D Time Brews, a fantastic program that Pete and I run every other week here on the D and D Time Twitch channel, where Pete, blow I'm me, him. I'm him, myself, me, and you on the other side of this menu, the beautiful chat, all homebrew some cool, high quality content together for. Uh, Either, you know, Pete and I's dastardly diabolical use in Pete and Jeremy's D&D time, or for your use as our beloved viewers and players. Which is what um, we're going to be focused on, at, at least for the first half today, uh, as we're about to uh, go into our first subclass of the, uh, the first completed subclass that we've done. Uh, I remember no other subclass, only this one thus far. Yeah, I mean, this is the only subclass we've ever handled on Pete and Jeremy's d and Brew time. <laughs> anyway, I, I see some people out in chat. We got Shiva, who's tired from all of the what sounds like actually uh, intense gardening uh, that Shiva has been doing. Uh, we also uh, I saw reflected Max Meister. Uh, I see Sword. So, also. I'm I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Sword. Definitely Sword. Kohair. Sword Kohair. 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 It sounds like a pirate word. Sword Kohair. Uh, and also, thank you very much to uh, Reflected and Shiva, uh, who have donated. I'm sorry, I forgot Shiva. Shiva, I forgot I'm not supposed to say, but thank you to Reflected. Pete, I feel like that was the worst response. Ah, well. Anywho. Uh, yeah, how are you guys all doing today? I know I'm doing pretty great. Pete, I hope you're doing very well. I have been just absolutely absorbed in The Witcher 3 for the past... Three days. I started Thursday, Thursday afternoon, and between then and now, I've played it for like 35, 36 hours, which is a lot of time given I also did Pete and Jeremy's D&D time and slept a little bit in between those dates. But it's been a lot of fun. It's been really cool so far. I'm, I'm, I've just entered Novograd. Or I've been in Novograd for a little while. It's pretty cool. How about, how about you, Pete? Are you also playing The Witcher 3? I have never played The Witcher 3. Uh, instead, um, I've been playing a lot of Dungeons & Dragons. That's uh, weird. Why would you play that nerd game? Other, other than D&D time-related Dungeons & Dragons, I have played Dungeons & Dragons. Pete, are you saying you're cheating on D&D well. &D time with other people? I how think, could you? I think those are the exact words that I'm saying. But Jeremy... I know that you also have a D and D mistress, so to speak. No, a it was it's a, a it's consort. a master. It's a dread lord and master, Count Strahd von Zarovich. Uh, oh, he, he killed us. Uh, well, he didn't. He didn't kill us. We didn't even get to Strahd to get him to kill us. Anyway, I thought the point. His minions how you, killed you, which is it's, it's arguably worse. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, and I'm very excited to talk about uh, our first ever subclass. Yeah, I'm very excited about this one. It's come up pretty good. I'm really happy with the kind of like polish that uh, Pete and I have kind of put on it throughout the week. There are definitely still a lot of things that, you know, we want to talk with you guys about and uh, see, you know, that everyone's on the same kind of page with it. So I think first I'm going to put out a link in the chat here. It's a Google Doc preview link. Uh, that Ooh. should bring you uh, directly to what we're currently working on, the document we're working our, on right now. Our doc. Um, so if you want to follow along, that's the link for you. Pete, can you just confirm it wasn't deleted by the... Uh, I can see it. Automod? Although okay, I am right. D&D time, so... Yeah, I, it would still show it as deleted okay. if Automod had deleted. Okay, cool. So, yeah, cool. So you guys can all follow that link and, uh, yeah, follow along if you want. As we kind of talk through things. Want, um, to, uh, want to, to dive in? Just get into it? Yeah, you want me to kick off or you got it? Um, oh, Pete! Pete. Pete. What? What delectable beverage are you oh, correct. enjoying today? Uh, I believe I'm drinking the same thing I was drinking last time because I still had some left. And I don't... Pete, I feel like I think what a I... pleb. You're drinking the same thing again? Uh, you're drinking I the same like drink I... twice? How could you do that? I How feel unoriginal. like I drink less than I think I drink. Because I always buy 12 packs, and then they last me forever. Uh, but I have the Harpoon Flannel Friday. It's pretty good. It's, uh, according to the bottle, hoppy, malty, and crisp. And I would say it is hoppy. I would not necessarily call it crisp. But 
pretty good. Mm. What about you? Jeremy? I have a rum and coke, as I always oh. do. Yeah. The uh, whole what? me making fun of your non-originality, that was uh, a, a direct, ah, you know. One of those. Yeah, one of those. That's me. I've, I've, <laughs> heard, of, I've heard of jokes before. Uh, Sailor Jerry's today, Jeremy? Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, good. Very simple, straightforward. Coca-Cola uh, classic? Uh, no, nah, diet. Diet, fam. Oh, really? Yeah, it makes no difference to me in, in, a, in a mix like this. Also, I prefer the diet, usually. So uh, let's um, let's take a moment and start talking about what we're doing here. What the what the circle of Drew is, circle of trash looks like. So um, yeah, go ahead, take it away, Jeremy. Yeah, all right. So we uh, yeah, hypocrisy is the word uh, is exactly the word yeah. I was looking for. Brian Uh So circle of trash druid. Uh, last week when we kind of talked about this. We had uh, come up with some really kind of cool ideas together. A ton of different concepts were put forward. Um, some of them we were able to to keep. Other ones we kind of had to dial back on a little bit just to keep everything under the same general convention yes. uh, that the other druids are. But yeah, overall, I'm pretty happy with where it came out. Um, our big kind of core concept last week was the trash kind of uh, mantra, reduce, reuse, recycle, right? This kind of silly, goofy phrase that kind of defines the trash kingdom in D&D time, a land of just waste and garbage that is reused uh, in silly, funny ways to make the trash kingdom. Um, and so we dialed that back a little bit because we had a lot of trouble really hammering in what the hell is recycle in the context of Dungeons and Dragons? Like, abilities that a druid could have. Um, obviously, it's the Fabricate spell, but that's a fourth-level spell, and it's a little funky in its own right, and we didn't think, we didn't feel super comfortable trying to make a dialed-back version of that that we could give this druid as a core defining ability. So we really focused on reduce and uh, reuse, right? This idea of trash of ruin of destroying things uh and rebuilding and preserving so we really wanted to keep this ruination preservation duality uh, concept yes right? i see uh i see card pocket uh record uh mentioning is nature's touch a mistborn reference uh i think we have a, a little bit of that in there uh just because we focus on preservation and ruin because they are you know essentially op opposites but they don't actually have anything to do with uh, only in the phrasing. Only yes, in the phrasing. Only, only in the terms of the words. I'm sure that there was some uh, inspiration there. I know Jeremy came up with those ones. Yeah, it's a powerful concept. It is. And you'll see that concept kind of repeated a couple times in this uh, subclass option. Yeah. Uh, so, so you want to talk about uh, Nature's Touch, Jeremy? I was thinking before that, we should take a minute and just read through uh, the, the our base description, right, of, of what we have decided this through it is. Actually, um, yeah, um, I can do that again. Uh, I remember when I read that last week, uh, that was more of like as a guideline. I'm actually interested to see how much where it is now, because we didn't actually go back over this particular thing, how much it reflects what we ended up with. Uh, so let's see. Um, the circle of trash. All physical materials that exist within this world, other than those few created or conjured by magic, can draw their origins from nature, no matter how processed, polished, or twisted they may be. Druids of the Circle of Trash recognize that even the most magnificent of cities and ornate of objects is wrought from the natural, and inevitably, no matter how long it takes, to the natural they will return. They watch over the transition of the creations of civilization back into their base materials, using their magic to both aid in the process and slow or hasten it as they see fit. They can manipulate the dried wood within constructions, the hardened clay within ceramics, and even the raw ore in refined metals. They are guardians of ancient ruins and of forgotten places. Uh, I think that, that actually rereading it sums up very well where we ended up. Exactly. It is a, a druid focused on the forgotten, the uh, the ruined, and the kind of balance, right? The guardian of that line between destruction and kind of creation uh, that we really wanted to stick with. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, and so that brings us into our first ability. Druids get their first abilities at level two. Uh, at least, I'm sorry, their first uh, druid circle abilities, which the druid circle is a subclass for druids. Um, and this is going to help to really be the identity 
of um, of this class. We gave them nature's touch. And it reads, you see past the veils of civilization to feel the nature in its roots, striving to preserve that which is right and ruin that which must be remade. You gain the following benefits. And you gain cool two cool features. Uh, preserve. You learn the mending cantrip. When you use this cantrip, you may mend any inanimate, non-magical surface, such as a crack in a stone wall, uh, Oh, in addition to objects. So that's the mending cantrip is usually just objects. This includes uh, not, uh, buildings surfaces. or surfaces, yes. Yep. Uh, the maximum length of the break or tear that you can mend increases to 5 feet when you reach 5th level, 10 feet when you reach 11th level, and 50 feet when you reach 17th level. That is preservation. Basically the ability to kind of put things back together. Yeah. Um, uh, and actually, we already see a comment from Chiba here, which I think is a fairly good point. Um, says, the maximum length of the object or surface that you can destroy increases to. Chiba says, I feel like this needs to be reworded because the first part specifies in any dimension, but length sounds like it's only in one dimension. Um, you see, it's interesting that you mentioned that because we took the phrasing um, directly from the mending cantrip. Now, and I believe the mending cantrip actually says the maximum length, but it might say dimension. That just might be a, a mistake on our part. Um, Let me look at mending right now while we're talking about it. Yeah, it, I don't think it's clear um, entirely. Clear. Um, so we, you're right. We might have to revise that. Um, I, I think uh, card pockets have already direction would fix that. So as long as the breaker tear is no larger than one foot oh. in any dimension. Is the okay, so Brian, actually, but you're reading ahead. You're talking about Ruin. So the other ability that you get is your kind of core class feature is Ruin. And that is, you learn to channel the destructive toll of time. Over the course of one minute, you can touch a non-magical object or surface that is no longer than one foot in any dimension, causing it to crumble to dust. The maximum length, and I think that's where we have to say dimension. Okay. Of the object or service you can destroy increases to 5 feet when you reach 5th level, 10 when you reach 11th, and 50 when you reach 17th level. Yeah, so these are just two kind of core, core abilities. Um, druids tend to get their biggest power spikes at level 2. And so we needed this to, we wanted this feature to carry a lot of oomph and really follow through the druid throughout their uh, their level and become more powerful. Um and Another then the second thing I was going to say about uh, second level druid abilities is they always distinctly scale in the way that they work. Uh, so yep. when you get your circle of moon ability, if you're a, a moon druid, for example, you get better and better beast shapes as you level up. Uh, with nature, you get more and more spells. So in the same way, we chose to make our things scale a lot more clearly with just direct levels, but the same idea. Exactly. Um, and yeah, so that's uh, where we're at with that right now. And then the second feature you get at level two is called Know the Wayward Path. Uh, and maybe we have a different name for these. All the names are current temporary placeholder names. Um, yeah. If you guys have better names, feel free to shoot them out in chat. We're watching. <laughs> um, know the Wayward Path says, starting at second level, when you cast a spell or use a magical ability that would create difficult terrain, you can choose a number of creatures equal to your wisdom modifier that you can see. You and the chosen creatures automatically succeed on any saving throw against the spell or ability and ignore the difficult terrain as well as any damage or other detrimental effect associated with moving through it. A bit of a mouthful, but overall I think this really hits the nail on the head of what we were looking for. We decided early on that the kind of archetype that this druid was going to hold and kind of stick to is difficult terrain, is battlefield control. Uh, whether that be it's debuffing enemies and supporting allies in a way, uh, in this case, directly through controlling the battlefield mm -hmm. and creating this difficult. So uh, I really like this feature. I think it really encourages a druid to take spells like Entangle or Sleet Storm or maybe some lesser used spells because... Yeah, spells that are really yeah. cool but don't get to see the light of day a lot of the time, and this will push them well over that kind of power spike where they're now like mm. the best choice if you're this kind of druid. Yeah, like spike growth is a spell that's almost never used, very rarely used. If you use it, congratulations. You are the road less traveled. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's this will make that spell 
pretty pretty damn good. Um, Indeed. It's also one of those abilities, right, where this is always a good thing. Even if it makes this druid really powerful, that's still okay. Because it makes the druid more powerful in a way that it helps the, your allies. Right? This doesn't actually make your difficult terrain any more impactful. This just makes it less bad for your allies to deal with. Um, nothing Absolutely. sucks more than being downed by your own allies spell and this can help to negate that which we really like um, but yeah this is our big powerful like combat ability whereas the first one is a lot more out of combat because each mending takes a minute and the ruin uh, ability takes a minute yeah. and again in, when we were kind of thinking about balance for this the slot that we were aiming for was weaker than moon uh, but a little bit more powerful than land, which we both kind of think that we've fallen more, you know, fairly close into. Uh, but also let us know what you think on that. If this is, you know, you think that the things that we have given it are more or less impactful than one or the other. Yeah, the ones that were really, um, at least I'm, I speak for myself, but uh, that I'm a little dice, not dicey, but um, I'm unsure of are the ruin and preservation size increases with level. Mm -hmm. um, mainly that last bump, that, that last 17th big, level. 17th pool. level jump. That 17th level ruin is like, yes, let me just destroy 50 feet of castle wall. Um, well, the way that I was actually reading this, Jeremy, is that this would not allow you to do that. Um, on the preserve, you could repair it, but you couldn't restore it. If, it. if you couldn't destroy it, it was whole. If the whole of the object was larger, uh, oh. it would not function on it. I think we have worded it so that it works that way at the moment, but if not, then if we do want to do that, maybe There's we should There's no larger than one foot in any dimension. Okay, so yeah, I think you're right. Um, but still, it's 50 feet is a lot. Like, you know, yeah. let me go up to this door puzzle. Uh, this door puzzle, let me go up and... Yeah, hit, rip hit, the castle the gate, though. Exactly, Shiva. Yeah. So well, there's... you gotta get up to that gate for a whole minute, though. And actually, at that point, that be that could be really cool. That could be a cool narrative element. And you're not getting it till seventeenth level, so, so you know so, what? You know, end gamey. I, I kind of like it. Close. Yeah, I do too. But, uh, it's definitely you know, it's definitely strong. It's it's cool. I I don't know. I'm I'm very uh, I agree that it's probably the most dangerous thing on here. Though. I like the idea of just destroying someone's house. Just like ah, peasant, you have slighted me. <laughs> Give me a minute, and then your house is dust. Get wrecked. Big well, bad wolf puffing and puffing and oh, <laughs> tearing well, his house down. Well, that's also you guys got a great idea for uh, a trash druid now that you can use. Uh, and also, uh, this is a thing I just wanted to mention about the the trash druid in general. The thing I really love about this, we didn't talk about it much, but this is a druid that this is <laughs> a druid trash that now. likes. Well, yeah, I mean, this is the trash king, uh, but it's a druid that likes civilization and is okay with civilization, which I think is a really cool kind of take. And yep. obviously each person will play that in their own way and maybe some still won't and will take different elements that they like. Uh, but on the whole, it kind of really gives an opportunity to create a druid that just sees civilization as part of nature, which I think is awesome. Yeah, I agree. Um, we'll so let's... Yeah, we'll, we'll jump to that in just a second. But thank you, everyone, for hanging out so far. Again, I'm going to post the link again for you to see if you want to follow along. Because uh, I know we've gotten a little buried at this point. It's way up there. Um, but yeah, feel free. If you have any ideas for different names for abilities, or um, maybe any, if you have ideas. questions or concerns with uh, some of the execution, let us know in the chat. And we can, uh, we're kind of live working this now. Yeah, you know? patching it. Patching it a little bit. Uh, yeah. And you know, please, and please do, because this is the, something that you guys will be playing and be able to play. So your opinion really matters a lot. Exactly. We hope, we want this to be something you guys will all really enjoy. So, hey, so, you want to take us in on Scrounger's yeah, Appraisal, say, level let me, 6 feature? Let me read this level 6 feature. It's called Scrounger's Appraisal. At 6th level, you learn to speak the language of lost and forgotten things. As an action, you can touch an abandoned or broken object or surface and learn what types of creatures have been within 10 feet of it in the past 24 hours or since it was abandoned or broken, whichever time is shorter. You can also determine the approximate, approximate number of creatures of each type, but not their identities. If the object is broken or worn, you also learn what the object looked like when it was new. The DM's option, you may also realize you know a piece of the object's history, such as its creator, if it has any. So there's yeah. a lot there. 
uh, and it's a little bit dense. We might want to put a, a break in there somewhere. Uh, yeah, like we may want to re, you know, format. Fence. I feel <laughs> just like just I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Yeah, that sounds about right, right there. Yeah, um, but this is a fairly uh, it's it's fairly straightforward and kind of intuitive in the way it works. You pick up some lost item on the ground. Maybe there is a down soldier with just an old kind of rusted sword that you find at the foot of the dungeon. Um, when you pick it up, you find that oh yes, yeah, some cobalts have been walking by, and now you have this additional piece of uh, information. And the DM, if they want to choose to get a little bit more flavorful with it, can also you know show you maybe the moment when this sword was forged, uh, as they use that kind of second half of the feature. Uh, it you know allows some creative uh, so creative storytelling options for the DM and mechanically provides some useful tactical information to the player. Yeah, um, I like this ability because it's not super powerful, yes. but it's cool, right? It's kind of tying into that other aspect. The There's the ruin preservation motif and there's the lost and forgotten things motif that we're trying to kind of tie together here. And I think this is a really cool way to do that without being too powerful. Also, howdy, Diadems. Welcome to the chat. Indeed. Hello. It's, uh, good to see you, bud. So that is uh, Scrounger's appraisal. Um, yeah, I don't know if I there's like a lot it. to uh, talk about there. I think I think that one's in a very good place. <laughs> I agree. Um, so our next ability, we're kind of uh, not certain how we feel about the name quite yet. We're like, yes, it's this not like a bad one. name, but yeah, you know, uh, but placeholder. Last edition. Uh, Sheep is asking in chat, actually, about the Scrounger's appraisal. Uh, is there a reason you phrased it, you might also realize, instead of just, you may learn? That is a great point. Um, uh, yes, that was uh, taken directly from the DM's guide, but it also, I think, in the context in which it was originally placed, that made a little bit more sense. Um, <laughs> so I think, uh, <laughs> nice DMs. Sorry, DMs. If only, if only. Uh, but I think you're right. I, I think that's something that we can change. Yeah, there's certain aspects, uh, certain places in the book where they have um, particular phrasing. And I'm not sure why they use it. I think it's just to sound a little more yieldy, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, but in this well, case... I think in that particular context, uh, and that was my mistake, because uh, that text, uh, one of the places it comes up is on the Mastermind Rogue, uh, and I think the mm -hmm. idea on the Mastermind Rogue is it's you remembering rather than discovering. Uh, so I think yeah. that was the reason for that mistake. So that's my bad. It's a good uh, good point. Okay, cool. Thank you for the uh, for the note there, Shiba, and uh, enjoy uh, enjoy the rest of your work today, Dems. Uh, uh, card as much as slow, you can. <laughs> slow regard for silent things. On the subject of books, uh, I remember... Uh, uh, I believe the exact word I said to Jeremy is, this ability feels very rough to see. <laughs> uh, so we're on, again, on the same page there. Well, what's really interesting about uh, this ability is basically we just took um, an ability off of, I believe it's called the Geonid, uh, a, a kind of one-off monster that shows up in one of the published adventures. No spoilers. <laughs> um and yeah, we, we decided to put it in here because we just thought it felt right. Thought it'd be cool if, like, the secret language of lost and forgotten things, like, it just feels right. Yeah, I actually, we should, very, put the, we should put cool. the word secret in there. Uh, but yeah, it just feels like the, like, there's a deeper... Um, there's a story there. Exactly. It's a deeper story, and it's an open story for you as a player to grab onto as like when you're fleshing out and making your character something to think about and say like i know the secret language of lost and forgotten things what is that like what the fuck is that but you've learned it also, hi, uh but yeah i think it's just a fun fun ability it's one of my it's i think the most flavorful for me ability i, I agree um and we're next moving move back on. into a more me mechanical realm once more Exactly. Level 10. Level 10 is another huge level for druids. Um, Circle of Land, I believe, gets poison immunity and some other stuff that's like charm, pretty like damn charm good. Like advantage or something like that. Yeah, some, some pretty good features, actually. Some very undervalued features. Um, and then, of course, Circle of Moon gets the ability to double down on its beast shapes and go with elemental shapes. Which are uh, right. Use, yeah, use two uh, wild shapes 
for one very powerful form, uh, which is very valuable. Like, it's way more powerful than it feels, even though you're using two twice the resources to get a form that's not twice as good, because you're getting both the all the power all at once instead of over the course of two wild shapes. It's just, mm. it's a lot. It's very good, very powerful. Yeah, um, agreed. But we wanted to put some power here, and this is uh, another case where we got to show off that preserve ruin kind of duality. Last week we had it as a single feature which was really focused on that ruin aspect. It was a storm of yes, ruin, yes. which was cool. It was really cool. So yeah, cool. I mean, it was, it was radical. But it didn't really fit with the rest of the design. It wasn't super cohesive. It kind of made it feel like this isn't a trash druid. This isn't a, a balanced druid. This is a ruin druid, um, yeah. which is neat. But it wasn't what we were going for. Yeah. Um, which is uh, why we've kind of taken it back to this level now. Um, do you want me to read it, Peter? Do you want to um, talk to I can, I can go. Uh, sure. sure. Uh, by 10th level, uh, the, the ability titled, again, tentative, is Echoes of Creation. By 10th level, your magic influences materials around it with little conscious effort by you. When you cast a spell or... That should say, you cast a spell of first level or higher that targets a single creature, you may choose one of the following additional effects. So the first is a preserve effect. If the target is carrying or wearing equipment, it becomes temporarily preserved. Metal is cleared of rust and sharpened, cloth patched and strengthened, and color is made vibrant. The target gains temporary hit points equal to half your druid level, and when the target makes an ability check, attack roll, or saving throw, the target can roll 1d4 and add the number ruled to the result. Ruin. Non-natural surfaces, such as floor of a, uh, such as the floor of a building or a paved road within a ten-foot radius of the target, crumble and become difficult terrain. The target is wearing or carrying equipment it begins to degrade. When the target makes an attack roll or a saving throw, the target rolls one d4 and subtracts the number rolled from the result. These effects last for one minute or until this feature is used again. All righty. Um, so these are two pretty baller features, and already Shiba bringing up the point uh so ruin instantaneous effect within a 10 foot radius the area becomes difficult terrain that's not that part is not ongoing the difficult terrain remains it doesn't move with the creature Indeed. that was a, a thing that pete and i were kind of juggling with or we were thinking about for a while yeah um because if it just perma halved a creature's speed that's insane like that's so strong. Yeah. Only, um, like only if if they don't have a flying speed, they're kind of screwed. Yeah, but um, we like this feature. Again, it's specialized. Specialized is kind of our our key word for tonight. We're talking about this druid. Just like its other core other abilities, destroyed objects or surfaces, or repaired objects or surfaces. This directly buffs or debuffs an ally or enemy. Um, it's not super versatile, but it's pretty good. And it's yeah. super thematic, uh, we think, at least. Absolutely. Um, I just kind really like the... Um, marking someone for ruin or... Yeah. yeah. Well, I kind of imagine the echoes of creation. It's sort of like when you use your magic, it just kind of shows the things that they're wearing and the area around them like it was when it was either in its first moments or its final moments, uh, which mm. I think is a very cool just sort of aesthetic. Um, yeah, I see what well, she but that's that's the point. Um Yeah, I see I see what you're saying. She by she and Chad is saying, uh, okay, I feel like you need to put some phrasing to differentiate what is immediate and what is pervasive. Uh, because for Rune, it seems like both are pervasive features. They are. The difficult terrain lasts for the minute. It just doesn't it doesn't move, move with. with Yeah. Yeah. So I think we need we can probably pull some phrasing out of like the darkness spell, maybe. Because uh, I know Darkness Spell has the option to either move with a creature or... Um, um, as it, yeah. As it stands, this is for all of your spells of first level or higher, so not cantrips, naturally. Uh, yep. But every time you cast a first level spell, you can use this. Um, so if you want to use it uh, in a utility situation, you could burn a use first level spell to make it function like a guidance cantrip uh, and, and have someone get kind of an ability check. Oh, it's better than a guidance cantrip. It's guidance for a minute. 
on everything for a oh, minute. Oh, yes, that's true. Yeah. This is an ability that we really like. I think the ex example I was thinking of at first was, well, how is this feature going to be used, right? Obviously, preserve is only going to be used... My first thought was preserve is only going to be used with healing ward. But then I thought, there are some other pretty good single target features that like a druid might use. Lesser Restoration mm -hmm. is a spell that is rarely used because all it does is cleanse a debuff. Specific condition, yes. Well, if that also now gives you some temp hit points and gives you a bless effect, you're probably a lot. You're a lot more likely to take the action economy to use lesser restoration. Like that's okay. You can do that now. It's actually good. Uh, another one is um, enhance ability, uh, an ability that like it gives advantage on ability checks and whatnot. Um, that it's fairly infrequently used, but uh, Jiba points out bark skin or stone skin. Yeah, some other yeah. pretty. Pretty cool, yeah, especially if you have time to spells, prep for a battle. But like... These lost and forgotten spells. That's what we're <laughs> really encouraging here. That's interesting uh, that it kind of has worked out in that way, too. Yeah. And uh, we really like that. Now, as ter in terms of the ruin, the uh, bad effect, it's interesting because I could see some really interesting features coming out of there. Um, for example... I could see in like a chase scene something really dumb happening, and maybe this isn't something we want to be able to even be possible, but I could see the druid using a healing word to then ruin an enemy because they can't not be affected by it, which is like a little dicey, uh, but kind of even, funny. Like, honestly, that doesn't even bother me because uh, it feels like then they're just like, they just need to like create, like, I don't know, I feel like I could. I would like that story element because they're just creating mm -hmm. magic. They're just using magic in the area and it's twisting it and then kind of twisting it. So they're just using it as like a vehicle. I don't know. I, I, you must, I almost even like that scenario. Yeah, it, it's neat. Uh, in terms of other single target abilities, um, that's where it's a little funky because we use the phrase targets a single creature. Um, that doesn't mean hits a single creature. That's targets a single creature. Yes. It's a phrase that's used a lot. Um, so even if like you cast Fairy Fire and it's only going to hit one creature, it has that the doesn't matter. To target multiple creatures, so yeah. it does not uh, work. Make all spells meta again. Yeah, exactly. Um, what else? I mean, I'm trying to think of. There aren't a lot of abilities that target just enemies, but like Earthbind is an example of one, Earthbind which a drags game. a creature to the ground, which I think could actually be pretty cool. Um, oh, and that works really well too, because they get dragged to the ground, and then that ground is also difficult terrain, which is really cool. Heat Metal is kind of like the the quintessential like powerful one. Hold Person is another very powerful one. Well, Heat Metal, um, I don't know if it would work, because it does not target a creature, does it? Does not it target the object uh oh you are actually correct um and i don't know if we want to word it so that it would work like that uh but hmm interesting I, I don't, i'm not sure i am not certain but hold person would it would yeah, certainly hold, apply hold to person. that'd be very um uh, uh, would not actually i guess that would be good if well that'd be great yeah, well, I guess they're also, held, and then once okay, they so break they, the hold, they're in this big circle of difficult terrain, and they have the Look kind of that. pain on them. No, and I would. Yeah. And I oh God, so it's harder for them clear. to save. I was going to say, well, I, I think just to be clear, I don't think this affects saves on the save. Like when you cast hold person, it doesn't give them a minus d4 to the save against that hold person. Is a thing is I don't think a mechanic that we want. Not to that initial save, but to saves on subsequent turns that would. Yeah, future ones. Yeah. Yes, but I think for the initial one, is it clear that it doesn't do that right now? Um, when you cast the target single creature. Yeah, no. you can choose one of the following additional effects. We need to use a different phrasing than cast. So I'm going to just highlight that. It's something to come back to. Okay. Uh, we'll figure out what the phrasing actually is. But anyway, we got a question in chat from V Bunny. Uh, heat metal targets an object. Why can't you ruin an object? That's a great point. And that's something we had discussed a little bit last time. And there's a there's a reason for it. It's a mechanical reason. Um, 
if you look at spells like fireball or uh, the the like that like sets fire to objects that are not held or carried, very specific to not objects that are held or carried. Um, the only exception to that rule is, to my knowledge, heat metal, um, which expressly is something that is held or carried. Yeah, if it um, if it does allow you to do that, they specifically say that you can do that. Yeah, and the reason for that is. If a creature uses a weapon, any ability that affects that weapon in any degree of permanence is extremely powerful because you're taking away their source of damage. Take like a pit fiend, for example. Pit yeah. fiends are strong. Their bite's powerful. Their tear's pow- Their tail is powerful. But that mace, the mace is, the, real is thing. the monster. If that mace weren't there, that pit fiend would not be CR... 20? I don't know. It would not be as be as dangerous as, as it is. Yeah, it's nearly um, much of a threat. Likewise, the Terrask, which uses no weapons, if you have an ability that focuses on getting rid of weapons, your ability does nothing against it. Um, it's a little too bang or bust, and that can feel really bad to a lot of players. Spells like Disintegrate, which super powerful if they work, or nothing if they mm-hmm. don't can feel really bad and we wanted to try and avoid that design having it as an option like having disintegrate as a spell option that you can opt into is good but having it as the core feature to the class is something we wanted to avoid um just because we didn't want to put anyone in that circumstance where it's like well three quarters of the time my ability doesn't do anything but when it does it's great Eh, you know I mean, and, and, and that's why we chose kind of the duality of the abilities as well. So that there's one thing that's always mm. true. For example, um, since they have to be kind of in a dungeon, the or you know on some kind of paved thing for the first half to work, uh, odds are then in those situations, if you're encountering things like monsters, well, they're probably not wearing equipment to get the second ability to go off. So obviously, it's a little bit more effective against humanoids. But there's kind of a balance where there's two different conditions, and both of them affect in slightly different circumstances. So there's always kind of some benefit to the to the ruin aspect. Yeah, and actually, as a point to the ruin aspect, we kind of put that in there without doing it, right? When we say if the object is wearing or carrying equipment, it begins to degrade. That's yeah. our way of of like flavor wise saying if they have a sword, the sword gets rusty. If they have a hammer, it starts to chip. Yeah, and that's kind of the idea of what the 1d4 penalty is, is that kind of degradation. Yeah, but we we do that without saying only creatures with weapons are affected by this bane, right? Uh, Because, yeah, we want this to apply to any creature, even if it has... Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's that. I think Shiba made a point where we actually have to, like, key in a little bit more... Um, that this doesn't move. So I'm going to actually highlight yep. the 10-foot radius as well. Um, and the other question is, does the spell need to actually affect them if they succeed the save uh, and it has no effect? Does the feature still go off? Uh, and the answer to that question is, I would say, is yes, the feature just goes off. That is a very powerful ability. Uh, yeah, that's something that we haven't... Uh, we hadn't really talked about that. Uh, I yeah. think in its, in its current state, that is how the it works. The way it's written. Yeah, yeah. That, is, that is how it works currently. Now... That's pretty damn good. Uh, uh, whether or not we want that to be the case uh, is something that we'll think about. And that's, again, why we're doing this, is to notice these kind of little things. Those questions. Yeah, Because, I mean, honestly, what it comes down to, the druids don't have a lot of single-target spell options uh, for ruin. And with preservation, odds are, if you're using this feature, it's not an ability that can fail, you uh, know? Unless also, you're dispelling um, magic on someone who's petrified or something. Uh, Ice Knife would be considered a multi-target spell, actually, because the area of effect part of it always happens. If the spell has the potential to hit more than one target, uh, it is considered uh, that it does not target a single creature. The area of effect is secondary targets. Unfortunately, yeah. So there really aren't a lot of abilities that currently synergize through, and maybe we need to revise it a little bit more to be a little more open-ended. Um. Because I think having this work with, like, heat metal is something we'd want. Yeah, uh, I, so, I agree. Um, let's, uh, uh, I think we'll come back to it, but I think these are some good notes. Uh, but, um, 
yeah, I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's close, but definitely some really good points have been brought up. Instead of targets a single creature, I'll highlight that, and we can come back to like maybe if it targets maybe a single creature with, or with the a, object it with holds. A single or... target. Uh, we'll find that, out. That's a little bit funky. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have to think about it. Uh, yeah, I just pretended to know if that was intentional. Exactly, Shiba. Uh, yeah, right, we just kind of we're just kind of pretend. Yeah, maybe it was intentional. Exactly, precisely. Because um, we have to think, right? How many single target spells are Droid going to cast, really? How many spells do they have total? How many single target spells are they going to cast? So, I don't know. Uh, v Bunny saying single creature or object. Oh. I like or object. Yeah, I, I think that works. Uh, and then maybe we need to adjust some of the phrasing to state that, you know, if it targets, if the person's holding the object, yeah. they're affected. Um, um, and we'll have to think about it because there's also like, there's a question of like what degree of kind of elegance it loses in, in doing so, which is nice. And, and you go, yeah, for, a little there, finesse. There's, there's the there, dream, but... uh, there's the dream that everything is very elegant and kind of even. Uh, a lot of the design is par- parallel, not because necessarily it's the most perfect way of balancing things, but sometimes it's just nice to have abilities that are very clear in the way that they work, which is in a lot of cases not as important, but close to as important as good balance. Uh, you'll see that design. You know it would be yeah. sick, though? I'm sorry, Pete. I just got super excited. It seems like you're very excited, so go ahead. So V-Bunny's idea of it being able to target an object, you know, the first thought I had was um, heat metal. But what about locate object? I love the idea of putting this bane onto someone who's stolen something that you're trying to track down, and suddenly, like, you don't know where they are, but somewhere the Earth just... <laughs> you know like sunders like, around has, them as you have like them. i'm finding you object i'm finding <laughs> this lost thing it uh, is mine i mean that does sound uh that does sound pretty cool yeah i i, I don't i, I think it, that's just me though yeah we when we'll, we'll uh we'll, we'll figure it out we'll figure it out matthias the enchanter that is a cool ability thank you oh Card fucking give me the trash. I like Shiva. Yeah, that that is yeah. definitely scary. Like if you were someone who stole something, and then all of a sudden the object in your hand started to rust, and the ground around you just was like slowly <laughs> dissolving to dust, you'd be like, uh, odds are you'd actually drop it, and you'd just go and you could just go and pick it up after that minute effect fades. Nothing pisses off a player more than getting pickpocketed when they first enter like a big city in in a game. I love the idea that this player is just like, you did what, mate? <laughs> uh, Anywho, yeah, I like that idea. Last, it's uh, super cool. Let's talk about the final feature. Jeremy, do you want to read this one? Yeah. No, this feature is tentatively called Whispers of the Forgotten. It's a little um, on the nose. A little, yeah, a little on the nose. Um, again, names are tentative. If you have a, another name for any of these abilities, hit us up. Uh, just let us know. Just put it out in there in the chat. Um, but comparing, before we jump into it, comparing to the other druids, at level 14, the other two druid subclasses each get a very flavorful ability that isn't super powerful. So the land druid gets the ability, gets something really funky. They have sanctuary oh. from beasts. Yeah. Beasts can't attack them without succeeding on a wisdom saving throw. It's just weird. Um, it's cool. It's the idea that they walk through the forest and the animals part before them in respect. Um, but it's just a little funky. It's just a little weird. Um, and Moon Druid gets this really cool feature called 1000 Forms, where they get to cast the Alter Self spell at will. So they can grow claws and gills and things like that at will. Cool. At, Alter Self's a second level spell. Nice. But that's not that powerful at 14th level. Yes. It doesn't do a lot. It's just cool. Um, so this ability, we want it to feel cool. Yep. And it is uh, Whispers of the Forgotten. By 14th level, you can hear the whispers of lost and forgotten places. The whispers may speak of the place's creators, forgotten stories, or even secret lore that has never been widely known. When you finish a short rest, you can sense the presence of ruined or forgotten places within six miles of you. I'm going to add a few there. Uh, this feature does not reveal the place's locations, uh, precise locations, but gives you a general idea of how to find them. 
So yeah, that's basically it. You can just, whenever you take a short rest, there you can just tell there are secrets to be found around. Yeah, it's a very flavorful idea. Maybe there's a little bit more it needs, but I think it's pretty good the way it is personally. I kind of like yeah. it. Yeah. Um, for one thing, I, I do like the aspect of finishing a short or long rest being the trigger. Uh, so it, it doesn't kind of promote people to just like walk around and scan using their ability. It's like you kind of are looking around for secrets, uh, but then it, I imagine it would be used by a DM as almost like a kind of a, a vision quest sort of thing, where when you finish your short rest, you just kind of get some kind of forgotten... Uh, just just some kind of forgotten memory almost comes back into your mind of this place when it was younger. Uh, and the DM kind of describes to you uh, a few maybe like big landmarks and maybe one small kind of ruined tower uh, that you see kind of, you know, a mile or so away. Uh, you can tell what that used to be and you understand that as a landmark in the context of other stuff. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of cool stuff that you could do using this feature. Again, it's another very much like the sixth level feature, which we kind of Kind of circled it in with obviously two and ten being more of a focus on mechanics, uh, and six and fourteen being more of a focus on kind of storytelling and and the more exploration and role playing aspects of the game. Uh, I, I really think this gives a lot of cool storytelling options with GMs. Yeah, and uh, Matthias the Enchanter saying in chat it could do a history kind of general knowledge bonus thing too. I like that. Um, here's kind of the reason we have it phrased where it is. We have a lot of ambiguity in this uh this ability because the idea right is while you take a shorter long rest you are hearing these whispers and learning of these places so that's why we have the whispers may speak of the places creators forgotten stories or even secret lore that is not widely that is kind of a uh a, an under you know a softball being thrown to the the dungeon master of here are some cool things you can tell your player about or anything around this kind of context without having a definitive um what do you call it uh without specifics. putting it in a box yeah right um because we want at level four for the 14th level you are kind of most characters uh, most adventurers are they're world heroes right they're going all over the world fighting ancient mm -hmm. dragons doing crazy stuff um you're going to crazy, bizarre places um, and fighting really powerful enemies. Um, and so we wanted to leave it a little open-ended because we figure some of the times these abilities, they might just be ways for the DM to be like, and here is some extra knowledge for that, you know, that puzzle you weren't getting. Well, the place tells you how to get through the fucking puzzle. Yay, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, which it's a nice little ex ex excuse there. Or maybe it's something that the DM decides, you know, I'm going to roll to see if this shows up, depending on where you are. And the DM randomly decides that, okay, yeah, there's a place here that interacts with your ability. Cool. And then it's a kind of um, improvised adventure where we don't want to say the DM has to tell you X, Y, or Z. Because the DM might not know X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. um, especially at 14th level where people have teleportation magic. All, all over the crazy. place and are just going... Um, I'm just like, I'm getting so excited thinking about this feature. Like, and, and maybe this is our, kind of both of our preference for DMing on the whole that designed this feature. As I'm like, real, I would be really excited to have a player have this feature. Uh, I would too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I see an uh, interesting point V-Bunny is asking. Expertise in history also thrown into Whispers of the Forgotten. I think 14th level is just too late to give a character expertise in something. Mm -hmm. If we were going to give it to them, maybe we should have given it to them like at level 2 or 6. Uh, and I'm not totally opposed to it. I'm just not sure they need it at this point. And uh, V-Bunny also saying, can a lost object also trigger Whispers of the Forgotten? Uh, the answer to that would be, well, for one thing, I think a DM could very easily interpret it in that way. But Scrounger's, uh, or I guess there's a question of the distance uh, factor. Scrounger's appraisal does kind of give you to get that Whispers of the Forgotten feel, where you're learning about things that you find and you're kind of, uh, you know, picked off. But it, as it stands, just something small like an object, you wouldn't be able to hear over the radius. 
well it's interesting right maybe we want to put in there forgotten places um or powerful objects or artifacts right uh, i like the use of the term artifacts uh, because because that is a category of weapon of very king powerful weapon um yeah. Uh, my head is like now just think about this swimming with like storytelling ideas. I love I, the I, I like the idea, right? That an object because my thought at first, right, is well, let's take Black Razor, right? Mm -hmm. The quintessential powerful sword, the most overpowered sword there is in D and D. Besides, maybe only Avenger, but no, it's Black Razor. That weapon isn't just lost in the mud somewhere. Yeah, that's a. A fair point. I was just thinking. You know, that weapon is in a place meant to contain it. And I like the uh, idea that the place tells you about the thing, not that the thing tells you about itself. Because I, I feel like one of the things about this, and we said before, like kind of there's a focus on non magical. Like the more natural things are, are the ones that you're speaking to. The more mundane things are what you speak to. Not like the the conjured like not like constructs yeah, and magically conjured things. I think the idea, right, is even with Black Razor, everyone's heard of Black Razor. Mm -hmm. Or maybe not Black Razor, but that's the best idea. But, like, let's take something a little more um, widely known, like the Eye and Hand of Vecna. Yes. Let's say in your setting, the Eye and Hand of Vecna have been, inch uh, have been sealed away to prevent them from returning to their master and causing the end of the world. Right? Super generic concept. The Eye and Hand are lost and are hidden and are trapped, and have been sealed. Or the Horn of Orcus, or the Wand of Orcus, or whatever the hell you're going to call it. Whatever powerful weapon it is. Everyone knows about that object. It is not lost or forgotten. It is, everyone, maybe not everyone, but powerful spellcasters and knowledgeable adventurers know what that is. They don't know where it is, but no one knows where it's hidden. That is what is lost. That is what is forgotten. Wh where it is trapped, probably who trapped it or hid it or locked it away. They know it's sealed away, but where and why and how? And those are the secrets that call these out. Are the, the these are the secrets. I think. Um, that being said, V-Bunny, if someone were to play this, cam this character in one of my campaigns, I have no doubt I would have the weapon call out to them via this ability at some point. Because I think that's cool. Um, especially in the context of like, they've gone to a couple places and the places have called out to them before. And then this place calls out to them, Directly. but there's another voice. Yeah. Right? There's also the voice of the Hand of Vecna or the Black Razor. Um, I guess what I'm saying is, in this context, I don't think we have to explicitly put it here because I think the DM can take the the wellspring the of idea that's here and really run with it. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's a very open-ended, very flexible, very flavor-focused ability. Like, this has uh, nothing this, this mechanical is, to it. Um, only the distance. Uh, that was the thing I really wanted to put into your memory. Mm -hmm. like, I feel like it needs something to ground it. On your general hex crawl adventure, which is six miles per hex, this is the hex you're in and each adjacent hex. Yes. Just in case you're wondering why they use six miles, that's why. A hex is six miles. Uh, but yeah, I love this ability. This design, honestly, it doesn't feel like even that fifth edition to me. Uh, it, oh, no. It feels very uh, like powered by the apocalypse or uh, something kind of more along uh, a more story focused game, but I love that about this ability, and I think that's what they were trying to do in a more mechanical way with a lot of the fifth edition abilities, but like chose not to lean into it with stuff like, for example, alter self at will and like the beast kind of thing. Uh, yeah, they were trying to come up with mechanical ways to do this kind of stuff, like spells that we looked at when we put this in here, and if you looked at the spells and compared them here, you'd actually notice. The similarities is Find the Path or Legend Lore. Those are both spells that we looked at, but we didn't want to just stick wholesale in here because they weren't the right. So we took a little phrasing here and there, and uh, overall, yeah. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. I don't think we need to expressly say um, 
I think I, you know, I think it's say artifact. I think it's fine to say artifact. Yeah, um, well, I like that artifact. The use of the term artifact, because uh, I don't know if it's necessarily a keyword. You can also think of it as just you know an artifact. You can yeah, because right, you want. if it's if it's a forgotten artifact, yeah, it's cool too. Like it's Carl Parker was saying, the relic of an ancient path. empire. Yeah, of its time, it was the legendary object, but now it is so far from. It was a legend two thousand years ago. Yeah, so it's just nothing now. Uh, and there's some uh, cool names cool. there, which we have uh, tacked down here. Shadows of the Past, Whispers of What Was. Uh, I like both of those. We'll have to yeah, also I... ruminate upon that. Um, um, I was looking at uh, Matthias's comment earlier, and Chad Matthias said, uh, trash equals loot. That's true if we could have a loose constructionist approach, that could be very pow- could be really powerful. I'm not entirely sure what you're necessarily meaning uh, with that. Uh, well, Maybe I, like I lost and was, forgotten gold. Uh, uh, I don't know if that was necessarily a direct response to I'm trash equals plunder. loot. Uh, oh, plunder. Thank you. Also, it's good to see you. Uh, My heart I'm sings. glad you're not working. Yeah, I'm, gl- I'm glad you're getting a night off, bud. Indeed. Also, thank you for your eight months of support. Holy shit. Eight We've had that sub button time. for a while now, Pete. Yeah. Crazy. Jeremy, in four more months, it will have been a year. I'm befuddled, Pete. Yeah, I'm befuddled. I, no, I'm I'm with you. Oh, darn, I for, I've done forgot. I think uh, Enchanted Matthias was referring less mm-hmm. to the trash equals loot thing and more just to the ability Whispers of the Forgotten on the whole, meaning however you decide to interpret it, the scope is kind of left to the DM, is I think what Matthias yeah. was saying. Yeah, and uh, one of the things I love about this, right, this is... As you get to high levels and you can teleport around randomly, you you start missing a lot of the exploration aspect. You teleport where you need to go. You scry the place and teleport there. And you're like, oh, we're there now. You know, there's not a lot of travel and discovery. And I like this as a, a vehicle of keeping that part of the adventure alive. Of you can continue to discover these ancient and forgotten places. Even as you're teleporting around willy-nilly and your characters have incredible, you know, world-warping power. And I, I like that. Like, I have a... Like, I have a Fey Warlock in a game that I'm running right now, and I'm seriously considering just giving them this ability on, like, an item at some point, just to, like, just so I can start using this tool as a DM. It's just cool. It's just yeah. awesome. Uh, but I think uh, that kind of covers everything that we wanted to talk about. Uh, there were some very good. Uh, there were some very good ideas. Some things that we'll have to go back, uh, maybe rephrase a few uh, a few things. Uh, it looks like most of the uh, most of the balance is close. There's just some questions of clarity, I think, on a lot of abilities, uh, which we will take a look at. And uh, I think we can say, Jeremy, the next time they see this feature, it will be available for uh, this. Subclass it will be available for play in the land of D and D time. Yes, yeah, I think it's actually going to be available for available per, for play probably by Wednesday, probably by our next show, D and D time talks. Yeah, should be radical. So as well. the uh, tomes, they call to me. <laughs> they call to us. Uh, but yeah, uh, in in kind of summary, what do we need to do? We need to clarify that the level ten features ruin aspect is stationary. Uh, We need to clarify that the level 10 feature can target objects or creatures, not just creatures. Mm -hmm. Um, And Uh, if it targets an object, it targets the creature holding the object. Yes. And And that's it. That's it. That's all we (laughs) really need. Um, If you guys have more ideas, feel free to let us know. Again, I'm going to post like one last time in chat. Feel free to take a peek. Um, Let us know how you feel and let us know if you have any different ideas for some of these placeholder names where we'll be listening absolutely um, um for the rest of the stream for today, now uh what i was gonna say for the rest of the stream today uh, what we're gonna be doing is going back over a while back y'all submitted some player submitted monsters which we were brewing we did a whole stream on it uh, a while ago now uh, but we're going to go through and finish up some of those ones that we didn't get through the first time uh and see how many <laughs> of those we can get done uh in the next maybe uh <laughs> Uh, I can't wait for the party of four trash druids next Friday. I mean, I would not be entirely surprised, uh, but we will have to wait and see. I was going to say, so uh, the, uh, it's very funny. The 
Uh, we're going to be doing some of those monsters. Uh, and I think before that, this seems like the very important, uh, the perfect time to take a quick break, Jeremy. Yeah, we're going to refresh our drinks real quick. You all refresh your brews as well. And we'll be back in about five minutes, give or take no seconds. We're exact here. Uh, and, and actually, uh, true. actually, yes. Yeah, and when we're back, we will be diving into the remainder of these Humber monsters. We've got some actually pretty sweet monsters to talk about. So stay tuned. And we'll while, I'm, uh, while I'm oh. thinking of it, uh, just right now, as, as a clarification on how rules are going to work, because uh, Final Chiba says, well, Lili oh. already is one, a trash druid. Uh, we are going to give some, like, amnesty for people who want to, like, if they have, like, a low-level druid that they would like to make a trash druid, uh, we are going to allow that. So if you have a druid already that you want to be a trash druid, that's uh, that's cool. We can we can make that work. Yeah, we have some kind of official, unofficial rules about this, uh, and I'm sorry to just not go to our break like we were about to, but official, unofficial rules... If your character is below, if your character is still in story tier, you can probably swap around your class and race options, and it's probably fine. Just, you know, talk to us about it. Yeah. Uh, also, hello, Nerdatron! Yeah, well, I'm glad that you're here to, to view my insanity. Uh, <laughs> hello, um, Nerdatron. And if your character is above level four, but you still feel like this is a really cool idea for your character, or any of our ideas are cool and fitting, let us know. I mean, we're we're flexible, you know. We're we're here and we run D and D time to have fun and to have the most fun we can. So if you see something and you're like, this just makes so much more sense, like, tell talk to us. You know, <laughs> we're there sure. to let um, everyone have the best time. You know, if things and if things are odd about it, we're also going to be you know maybe doing some patches on it or balance changes if things work out to be yeah. way too weak or powerful one way or the other. Exactly. Everything you see here will be released, but released in perpetual playtest. You know, yep. subject to review and what's going on. We're not going to be, you know, crazy and uh, sudden about it. But we're going to, you know, keep our eyes open. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, we'll be right back. we got to refresh our drinks. Uh, stay tuned. See you soon, uh, everybody. Bye-bye.
Welcome Why, hello. Back. How are you all doing? How was your break? Pete, how was your break? My break was incredible. I went to the bathroom and then I came back up. I said hi to my dad as I went downstairs. Wow. Did oh, everyone else? Uh, I went to the bathroom and said hello to my girlfriend and then I sat down here. So pretty much a very similar, similar vibe here. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> I'm ex- super excited to talk about these player submitted monster concepts again. I'm pretty pretty into them. I know we we left off on a pretty uh, cool concept with uh, sweet nothing. We're totally changing gears here over to monsters. Um, for anyone who isn't familiar, uh, oh, maybe a month ago, we uh, for D and D time brews, we took player submissions for monster concepts. And then Pete and I kind of hashed them out. Um, we obviously didn't get through all of them. We had quite a few concepts. And um, we only Spooky have so much time. Second thing. Yes. Uh, and the ones that we probably we don't get to today, we will probably have to leave behind. Is the next time we want to go with a yeah. fresh list so that they're all kind of fresh in everyone's memory. Uh, exactly. We'll probably get a couple done right now. Uh, we got, you know, about an hour or so. so yeah. We'll and uh, uh, Nerdotron... Thank you so much. Pete actually, Pete wrote up all of the music for D&D Time Brews uh, and D&D Time Talks, and Pete wrote all the D&D Time theme music. Uh, if there's a D&D Time theme music that isn't a very beautiful classical piece, uh, I would have made it. Yeah, if it's not public, dom- public domain classical music, it's probably made by Pete. I don't want to accidentally, so I was going to say, I don't want to accidentally take credit for like Dvorak's humoresque. Uh, <laughs> but but at the same time, if you could make time, Dvorak's humoresque. Oh, that's so uh, good. What a, what a world it would be. Uh, what an incredible piece of music that is. But Nerdotron, um, I'm with you on this, and I'm, I think Card Watch is with it too. If next Friday we just have four trash druids in one adventure, there's not much that would make Pete and I happy indeed. than you guys enjoying the final kind of design we've put together. Which would also be funny because they would use none of the features of the trash droid because yeah, uh, they'd all be the one. Be one. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's the, the heart that counts. It'd be the yeah, heart. The exactly. Uh, maybe uh, there's like Lee 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 as a trash droid uh, raid boss. Yes, Lee 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 and three trash dro- trash three droid trash apprentices. Disciples. Yeah. Yeah. It's like. Anyway, uh, uh, yeah, yours the bunny the folk living, are the best. Yeah, uh, we love the living folk. doodle, Shiva, which was in fact made. Uh, we did make the living doodle. We still have to run that in an adventure. It's going to happen. Uh, so <laughs> Be yeah, afraid. Let's, let's talk the um. Uh, let's talk the sweet nothing. Oh, and then after the sweet nothing, actually, I see Max Meister is still here. Uh, the next one would be the magnetic elemental, which is awesome because yeah, Max, that was a submission by Max Meister. So. Uh, let's, yeah, uh, so let's Max, start diving into the sweet nothing. Stick around, and we're going to do your magnetic elemental. So yeah, the sweet nothing. I'm going to copy the concept and drag I, it I up did. here. Oh my god, Pete, you're uh, so much better at this than me. I'm, in, I'm incredible. Uh, but uh, why don't I read that right now? Uh, so this was Pete, the original please. concept. Uh, this was a monster submit, submitted by a D Forgotten One. Uh, let me go ahead and just read it out. Uh, it would be a large to huge elemental of fragrant pale pink and blue mist, much like cotton candy. Tends to have various effective strategies, such as lulling people to sleep before casting a phantasmal force around them, or surrounding them so the sugar smell becomes so strong it confuses them, sometimes charming them to working alongside them so they can experience sweet bliss again. Normally found in the higher reaches of the Big Rock Candy Mountains. Uh, and just as a side note, these are monsters. We had people design monsters specifically for play in the Land of D&D time. So for anyone who's not familiar with the Land of D&D time, the Big Rock Candy Mountains are a region in our world that we run on Fridays uh, where everything is made out of candy. And, uh, you know, it snows ice cream. Uh, and despite being made out of candy and everything kind of having this sweet and kind of silly undertone, it is also a very kind of dark and scary place. So that is the aesthetic uh, that the sweet nothing was going for, which I think it hits very well. Yeah, this actually fits super well with like the kind of oh, almost like creepy, like dark whimsy is really the vibe I like to hit when I go to the Big Rock Candy Mountains because uh, it's such a goofy place of sugar and candy and ice cream. I love that juxtaposition of like the dark whimsy, the very Hansel and Gretel. Uh, kind of vibe 
Uh, was Hansel <laughs> and Gretel what I was trying to say? I think, oh, I think it was. I think it was. I think I'm not screwing up. I'm not the no, other no, wrong Grim Fairy Tale. That was the right one. Uh, I like Dirty Trust comment. DM trying to come up with the homebrew monsters. All right, hear me out. Gumball machine <laughs> that shoots out bombs. I mean, honestly, that sounds awesome, though. <laughs> it would fit very much in the land of D&D time. Uh, the way you phrased it was uh, there's some good comedic timing there. Uh, but I think that would actually fit very comfortably in the land of D&D time. Just, I could just, I could see that. Like, all right, guys, hear me out. It's a gumball machine, but there's the two hands oh, moving <laughs> down uh, from the side uh, of the face for that one. So let's uh, let's start the sweet nothing. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, first step, I like the idea of this being huge. Um, I do too. Mega big. There are not. It's not. There are not a lot of large creatures. I just feel like large creatures feel more monstrous by default, uh, and the fact that this thing is kind of amorphous in in it's kind of core, I think means that's working pretty well. Or is a good idea. I think this thing is evil. <laughs> uh, I think it is also evil. Uh, the only other thing... Uh, well, I was going to say it could be unaligned, but the description makes it sound very intelligent and intentional. In the yeah, I think, it, yeah, I think I it's agree. malicious. I think this is definitely a malicious creature that kind of lures people in, and the people it doesn't eat, it doesn't eat so that they can lure more people in. So I think this thing is like a neutral evil kind of deal. It's not lawful. It's not totally chaotic evil either. It's about it and nothing else. Agreed. So I think I think we mean. call this neutral evil and be very happy. Um, so let's talk about its AC and kind of hit point. Well, before um, we do that, we're going to have to decide on kind of what challenge we want to go for for this thing. Oh, yeah, shit. I should probably open up the monster calculator, huh? Um, uh, so we can, can just, look at that. If you don't feel like it, we can just kind of... Well, I mean, just just I have I have ability things on there that we're gonna. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So let's see. Um, what challenge rating do we want to look at this? I think this thing's pretty tough, actually. Yeah, I was thinking. Um, I mean, I, I wasn't thinking anything <laughs> like crazy, like a ten or an eleven range, but I think like a six or a seven, maybe. Yeah, I was thinking seven. I was thinking sure. right on the dot with seven. Let's do seven. Like definitely a higher CR. Like this is the big bad monster. Yeah. Uh, so let's put down under challenge. We're gonna make that seven. I don't know what how much XP that is. We'll worry about that later. Uh, I don't think it has any languages. Um, I Does agree. it? Uh, Maybe it would do like Sylvan or something. This creature is fairly incorporeal, though. We can agree on that, right? I don't um, think it's incorporeal. It's amorphous. Well, uh, it's almost like, like a like a fluffy ooze. Uh, I was oh, see. I was thinking of it as more like an air elemental. Uh, 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 because it's like pink and blue mist uh do we want to make it well the question is do we want to make it be like cotton candy or look like cotton candy but it's kind of this mist i hmm i was thinking of it more of like a cotton candy elemental but i think we could uh we could hold it either way uh i have no preference either way either forgotten what do you uh what do you want to do which one Sounds closer to what you originally kind of. Is forgot? Is the forgotten one here right now? Oh wait, I just assumed because I'm not sure if he's here. In the, yeah, he's usually here. He's usually he must here. be still busy today. Um, fluffy, uh, fluffy ooze, ooze elemental. elemental, like cotton candy. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, I, I love the idea of giving it because oozes have some really iconic features that are. I think we could totally put on here. So do we want to do um, the more ooze kind of route or the more? I think we want to kind of route because I was I looking think, at uh, grab an elemental condition of these was the reason I was asking. I think we kind of throw it as a mix between, right? We take some things that are on oozes and some things that are on elementals. So, like uh, for example, one of the properties that the ooze has, and I'm going to go down to features right now and give it to it is amorphous. amorphous. And instead of oblex, which I have, you know, as my default, uh, the elemental can move through space as narrow as one inch wide without squeezing. It can just kind of go, right? Um, I also think this creature does not have a regular speed. I think it just has a fly speed, right? Um, yeah. Uh, I think we can look straight at the air mental there. Uh, speed, zero sure. feet, fly, 90 feet, hover. Oh, it actually says zero for interesting. Uh, and what was it, 90 feet for... Mm -hmm. Um, yep. And it's uh, hover feet. its own its and own thing? It just says in parentheses after it, hover. Oh, okay. It's in parentheses. Okay. Um, so actually, what hover means is it doesn't fall at the end of its movement. 
uh, for those interested in, in the chat. And I mean, maybe this is because I'm looking also at the air elemental. It has an ability called air form. The elemental can enter a hostile creature space and stop there. It can move through a space as narrow as one inch wide without squeezing. See um, that. Right. I think that's an interesting point, right? Do we want to go that direction or do we want to go more like the oozes kind of like, um, what do you, what is it? What's I'm the difference? Of, the uh, cube what's the difference has... of the ooze ability there? Okay. So it's just basically the, it just doesn't have the ability to enter into a creature's space. Well, it does. It's, it can envelop creatures. They, they have a, a feature called envelop. Okay. I almost like the idea of this being like an ooze that charms you into coming over and then it eats you up. Okay. Uh, yeah. What sure, do you let's, think? Let's, let's, no, I'm fine with it. Let's go that route. Okay. So what I'll do is uh, I'm again going to copy this ability straight out of the gelatinous cube because the gelatinous cube is a, the example for this ability. And now I don't think we want to call it ooze cube, right? I probably want to give it a better name than ooze cube. Um, what do we want to call it? The cotton candy should be a sep. The cotton candy ooze should be a separate from sweet nothing. Uh, Max Max keeps saying. Um, and by that, she was saying it should go more air elemental. If it shares a space with someone, it makes con saves or fall asleep or something. Um, you know what? I think that's a fair point. You know what? Let's go with that. I'm 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 willing to go back here. Um, uh, well, I I, mean, I guess another reason I was kind of liking the ooze direction to play devil's advocate because I know I was originally the air guy is because okay. the next one is magnetic elemental. Oh, and the magnetic elemental probably is going to be very much the elemental. It's going to be so so that we don't that way we're not building kind of two very similar creatures. I, I feel like it would be fun to take this in a little bit more of a. Uh, yeah. Plus, I like the idea of the ooze that just like. Come to me, I'm hungry. Or we could make a magnetic ooze. <laughs> uh-uh. It just I pulls people with heavy no armor idea. into it. Oh, oh god. my god. That sounds terrifying. <laughs> that is hell on earth. There are a couple of traps. Like, uh, you know, I'm not going to spoil anything. Never mind. Um, anyway, uh, so we'll not call yeah, it ooze let's... cube. We'll call it uh, cotton candy form. Uh, the elemental eh, takes up its entire space. Other creatures can enter the space, but a creature that doesn't does so is subjected to the elementals engulf and has disadvantage. Same thing. Do we want to call this elemental, or do we want to call it news? Um, I feel like I, think we still want to call just... it, I don't know. I feel like we still want to call it an elemental, just for the sake of Forgotten's original vision. I don't know if that necessarily... Ah! Uh, oh, Opal Dragon, my hero! 2700 Ooh, XP. Thank you, Pete. I like this. All right. Beautiful. So do I don't do, think this speaks do any commas, language. do they? Huh? Don't do commas and challenge, do they? Or do they do commas? For 2900? For uh, I believe space. they do commas. They do commas. Okay. Uh, yeah, I agree. No languages. Um... Which they What's just the... use a an em dash, which I don't have on hand. I'm gonna quickly Google em dash. Uh, I'm a, a stickler for these very specific things, so it's a slightly longer dash than usual. Is what goes there. Uh, uh, before actually, before we even get into like the cotton candy form, let's start like thinking about why don't we do like strength and dex and all that stuff. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's let's do that. <laughs> let's take a step back. Uh, I strength... think this thing is super charismatic. Uh, I like that, and that would be it's probably it's spell casting. Yeah, uh, let's give it like a nineteen because it's it's an it's a big it's a big boy. Yeah, uh, um, I it's an ooze, so I think it's not wise or smart. Uh, I think it's just uh, I think it's very dumb. Uh, and do you I think, think it's it, that dumb? I think it's a little smarter than that. Uh, I think it's dumb. I think it's smarter than your average ooze, but not much. So it's not a cube with a one. Well, maybe it's elemental smart. Elemental smart is like six. Okay, yeah, I think that's fine because I think I think it's smart enough to realize like it needs to be somewhat discreet, but not smart enough to like lay that clever a trap. Uh, uh, and maybe it's like a little bit unwise, maybe like a nine. You think? Yeah, I'm okay with the or nine. Nine sounds more. good to me. Um, I was no, I think nine's fine. Nine's kind of where I was thinking about that. Cool. Uh, uh, constitution <laughs> is probably a little bit on the high side. 
Uh, I don't think it's actually as high as a lot of things that are oozes. Yeah, I think this actually is pretty low for an ooze, like maybe a 13 or 14. Um, um, yeah. Versus 14. your gelatinous cube, which is like a 20. I'm going to go with a um, 14. Um, dexterity, I feel like dexterity is something it excels in. Uh, yeah, and I, mean, I think Z Bunny was saying it in chat twice. too. I think this creature is really dexterous, but not really strong. So uh, I think there. I think maybe we give it like a three strength. Give it like that's its one real dump. Yeah, is, it's just very weak. It's made of cotton candy. You can tear yeah. through it, you know. Well, also, I think one uh, of the things about giving it three strength is it's actually not that big of a deficit because it has it's kind of an amorphous form that's going to prevent it from mm-hmm. being affected by a lot of the things that would. Uh, make it effective with strength. Although a stiff wind will ruin the sweet nothing. I love the idea, though, of some players just like, but wait, I have the gust spell! Gust of, gust of wind! Just, oh, it's gone forever. Nicely done. Um, V-Bunny was saying int 10. I think I think the int 6 is okay. Like, it's smart, but it can't speak. It's not yeah. quite sentient. Uh, it's index- got, like, this the primal intelligence. And dexterity, I'm going to throw it 17 arbitrarily. Um, yeah, I think it's okay. I'm good to you. Yeah, I think it's more or less all right. Nice I also story. like our odd, odd, even, even, odd, odd. I don't know. That just looks good to me. Yeah. It's very pleasant. Uh, saving um, throws. What is proficient in? Probably not strength. Probably not uh, dex. Not either. dex. I don't think. Uh, I don't think. Maybe uh, I would only think like. If we're going to give it a saving throw, I feel like it might have a wisdom saving throw. Because it's a magical creature, so it makes sense to me that it would be good against those kind of effects. I think it's wisdom and charisma. Uh, I think I this thing behind. does really exceed in charisma. Uh, I can I can get behind that. Uh, and so what would be the proficiency bonus on a CR7? Oh, well, let me jump over to my balance calculator. Oh, use your balance calculator. Let me look. Uh, proficiency bonus for a CR7 is a plus three. So that's going to be uh, plus seven there, and wisdom is going to be a plus, which is still terrible. Um, uh, not, not complete. Uh, not complete. Please. Vibani was saying con saving throws and deck saves. Deck. I don't see this thing as being super proficient in deck saves. It's quick, but there's it's a fast. lot of it. There's so and much of it. I think maybe, that... like, since we're not going the air elemental route, maybe it's not as quick as the air elemental. I, I think maybe 90 feet for this thing. Because we're going the more kind of mm. goofy ooze route might be too much. Maybe maybe more of a sixty. Yeah, I think I think sixty. Uh, or maybe even forty, just a little faster than your average. Uh, than your average. So much forever forcing it to be your friend. No one forces the sweet nothing to be one's friend. The sweet nothing forces you to be its friend. What do you think about forty feet? I like uh, sure. that it's like it's faster, but it's not that much fast. Yeah, I, I'm into it. Okay, works for me. I'll, I'll let you do that one. Um, oh, hey, well, thanks. No problem, Pete. I'm letting you help. I'm letting you. No. <laughs> letting. Uh, if anybody's saying 60 is good, we might come back to that. It depends on what we do with the engulf, right? Yeah. Well, because if that. that ends up being really powerful. One man. of the limiting factors on oozes a lot of the time on their engulf is... Their slow speed. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you can kite oozes very easily. But this is not an ooze that you kite. So this is a, it's definitely got proficiency in stealth, right? I think this is an ambush predator. Um, yeah, it kind of blends into the high altitude. And I think of. it also probably has deception, right? Oops. Uh, well, it can't right. speak. I don't think that doesn't mean it can't deceive, though. I feel like we just give it a false appearance. And that I would like be that. kind yep. of its deception. You're correct. I am with you 100% on that. Give it the false appearance trait later. Uh, let's talk about vulnerabilities. Uh, do we want it to be vulnerable to fire? Um, I mean, it's up I, in the very cold mountains. I think acid. Acid to melt the ooze? Or melt the well, it's, it's made of cotton candy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. As acid, I don't like know much about the what cotton candy is. Uh, as I matter. mean, we're just establishing it now. You eat cotton candy, you got it. Stomach acid that dissolves it. I don't know. I think I think I think fire would make a lot of sense, uh, but I think acid would be like a kind of surprising, like oh, an ooze that's vulnerable to acid. That's cool. Sure, let's do it. I think it'd be neat. Yeah. Also, there's not a lot of vulnerability. I just like vulnerability because yeah, they're interesting to learn. 
players who can like who f- discover those vulnerabilities right that's part of that third pillar of 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 exploration right everyone knows the combat pillar everyone knows the social pillar but the third pillar of gameplay is exploration and discovering vulnerabilities to like a creature is part of that that exploration pillar right figuring out like oh if i burn the troll it doesn't regenerate like this cool yeah, moment of yeah, discovery feels good. feels good a resistance to cold i definitely agree with b-bunny there uh, i i completely agree so i, put, even, I might cold. even consider uh an immunity or maybe not an immunity no i think resistance works so uh, we'll say fire and acid i want to put acid first uh luminarian is asking will D time ever have a live stream of a regular irl D game if you guys have buddies that want to do that uh, IRL might be a bit of a ways off for us, uh, as we are in very, very different locations, uh, but just a game, uh, like a consistent game that we run, uh, might be something that we would, uh, do sometime even soonish. Uh, we definitely have some kind of back burner plans for that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, I definitely agree. It's something that we've been thinking about for a while. Yeah. But there's a lot that goes into it, uh, that we're just... We only have so much time throughout the week, so. Yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, really, that's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. Let's talk about these uh, immunities here, because I think, I think we're good with resistance on cold. V-Bunny was saying immune to necrotic, but necrotic is also rot and decay. And I yeah. feel like that would affect this thing perfectly fine, because it's an organic material. Yeah, I think it would be um, okay. because like, like think, a construct. I think even if you look at constructs, most constructs aren't immune to necrotic damage. Really? I think not. Shield right. Guardian, I guess, is my kind of go-to. Yeah, it's just it's just poison that those are immune to. And I think, well, and maybe this is going to affect this guy. I think this, this guy's immune to poison. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good yeah. point there. Uh, uh, condition immunities. I know uh, one right off the bat. Well, let me get the pile. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> just drag the whole pile in there, and we'll just go from there. Yeah, um, we'll we'll start on we'll start with that, and we'll see what it. I'll let you pa- paste those in there. Yeah, I, I guess Passive that. perception is just going to be a nine. It's not very wise, uh, so it's not going to perceive super well. Resistant to bludgeoning. Ooh. Uh, I'm into that, for sure. I like that. Just not even non-magical bludgeoning. Well, I, well non-magical feels like the that would be the convention. Uh, there are creatures that are resistant to regular bludgeoning. They're usually swarms. Usually. Sweet I kind of is a swarm of one. Uh, sure, let's I go. I almost with. like I, the idea. No, I mean, I, I, if there's any place to take risks, it's on designing monsters. I, I don't think there's. I agree. Wrong yeah, with, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with just giving it flat out bludgeoning. Uh, condition immunities. These standard ones would be exhaustion, grappled, paralyzed, petrified, poisoned, prone, restrained, and unconscious. Prone was the one I wanted to make sure we had on there, and it's the only one that. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. I think. You think pretty that's much fine, just on. as is. Can it be charmed? I don't think it can be charmed. Uh, because of what it is? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Cause... Actually, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of like turning the sweet nothings stuff on himself. I suppose it's smart enough to be charmed, so I guess so. Sure. Uh, let me look uh, at who's none of the, what about the elementals, right? Because that's what we were basing it on, right? Fire elemental? Oh, uh, that, was a, that was an elemental... Oh, that list. was the elemental list. Right, yeah. uh, so I was also going to just look at it. Okay, so yeah, other ones that it, it might want to have, uh, if it's an ooze, are blinded, blinded, deafened, and uh, frightened are ones that ooze has, oozes have. They, uh, oozes actually do have charm immunity, it looks like. That's because they're too stupid. Yeah. Or in frightened immunity, but I think this... Yeah, have... again, too stupid. They don't have self-preservation. Yeah. But I think this nothing deafened, does. Uh, blinded and deafened makes sense to me. Uh, is it not having those ones? Yeah, because it doesn't have eyes. Uh, senses, um, it's got a passive perception of nine, but I think it also has blind sight. Oopsies. And deafened. Not that def- deafened is such a rare one to have come up in a meaningful way. It does happen, though. It usually is relevant with creatures' echolocation, yeah. which there are not a lot of them. Whales have and, echolocation and, and bats and dolphins, yeah, and whales uh, and bats. Um, blind sight. blind sight, sixty feet, I think, is good. Yep. And I think that's pretty much where we we are good here. Um, we'll there are a couple more too. ideas, kind of jumping around, like immunity to lightning, put out by Z Bunny. 
I like immunity to lightning, but usually oh, wait, creatures, if they're immune to lightning, they're constructs. They're stuff like um, the Flush Golem, I think, is immune to lightning. And I know the Shambling Mound is immune to lightning. And those are because it's like the, the Dr. Frankenstein kind of deal where it's like, it's alive! <laughs> and because that's what gives it life, it's immune to it. Um, the Luminary saying lightning immunity makes sense. Um, I don't want to give it two immunities. I mean, I, I'll, I'll give it resistance. I'll, I'll meet you halfway. Resistance. Yeah. I'll, I'll meet you halfway, because it does make sense. You're right. Um, but I don't want to give it full immunity there, because right. that could feel bad. Immunities can tend to feel really bad. There aren't a lot of spells that just do poison damage. So. I feel like this thing, uh, so it definitely has um, some innate spell casting. Uh, um, because it has a charm. Uh, it decidedly has a charm effect. That was actually something that I think that was specified in the description. Uh, uh maybe it's not specifically spellcaster. Yeah, I don't know if it necessarily needs spellcasting. I think it just needs an ability that can charm, like an attack that has a charm on it. I don't think we need to give it spells because it's not smart. I think it's smart enough to do spells. I think it's just some innate magical ability it has. That isn't innate spellcasting. <laughs> oh, no, that was the thing that was throwing me off. Uh, lulling people to sleep before casting a phantasmal forced around them. Uh, that, was the, that was the thing that go, got me, was specifically said, could cast phantasmal force. Um, phantasmal force is a very peculiar spell. I'd be yeah. a bit tentative to give it to it's a monster a, under any an circumstances. Int- it's an interesting... Yeah, it's a very... It's very much like our Trash Druid's level 14 ability. Very open-ended. Very complicated. Uh-oh. Uh, Opal Dragon saying, sweet scent, wait, wrong game. But actually, though, like, I feel like sweet scent could be the name of an ability. And maybe this is an aura, and it's got like a some sort of radius. Um, and well, maybe at... it's just while, you're in, while it's enveloping you. It has a that's brutal. Oh man, while it's enveloping you, it makes you want to get enveloped. Like, well, I think the idea, up. right, is just any creature within 30 feet is affected by this aura, this charm, right? So, sort of, you have to like save a, against uh, it. Sort of like a frightening presence, but more of a charm than a frightening. Yeah, presence. right. Okay. I kind of like that a, idea. Maybe it's you presence. can't move away from it, it's the opposite of charm. Um, oh no, uh, the opposite of fear. You can't run. I feel like if we do that, we want to make it even slower because then it's more interesting to me in the way it works. Like it would mechanically, it would make sense to me that like it would have that ability if it was trying to just catch up to people. Yeah, you know what? What do you say about twenty five? It's a little slow because it's so big. Yeah, and I, I love the idea that it's like a thirty foot aura at the start of the creature's turn. It has to make a save DC. Uh, save, and we know what the DC is, and it's probably Wisdom. Um, on fail, cannot willingly move further away from the elf. Uh, and we'll figure out the exact phrasing. Yeah, we can go back and um, we can go back and kind of reword some of the things. It probably has something oh. pseudo. Uh, probably has something pseudo potish. Maybe an enveloped creature makes a save at disadvantage. Oh God, that's brutal. I don't know if I want to do that. Uh, it's brutal, but this creature is brutal. The issue I have with it is it's kind of like a fail more kind of feature at that point. Uh, indeed. You know, it's oh, no, like it's, it's snowbally. Oh, sure. yeah. Uh, well, maybe we come back to that. I, uh, I, I agree with you that that's true. I just don't Because a creature enveloped is going to take this DC anyway. Yeah, mod for the DC, exactly, uh, Z-Bunny. It's going to be 8 yep. plus proficiency. Plus and that's why we gave him that big charisma. It's going to be 8 plus 3, so 11 be, plus uh, Rule-threatening. Boop. Um, cotton candy form, it take, it enters the creature's space. Other creatures can enter the space, blah, blah, blah. Creatures inside the, inside the elemental. Can be seen, but have total cover. Do you want to say total cover? Or do you want to say, like, half cover? No, I say total. Um, I would give take action for creature. 
elemental. I don't know. I, I feel like they wouldn't have total cover because it's made of cotton candy. Like you can fire an arrow through cotton candy. Okay. I think half cover's fine. Doing so require or we'll say three quarters. Because it's hard. A DC, and again, our DC is going to be 15. Uh, strength check, and the creature must and it takes. And we decide this thing does poison damage as its main damage type, because it's immune to poison. And so I think maybe it does poison damage. Um, it poisons you, like the cotton candy, its, its form itself is poisonous. Is that the idea? Yeah, I think, I think that's a cool idea. Sure. Uh, we may need to bump up this level here. Maybe instead of 3d6, it's more. Uh, I see um, an idea from Bionic Shiba came up. Make it so once they've succeeded, they cannot be affected further uh, in regards to the sweet scent. If we're going to do that, I think we're going to give this thing its speed back. Yeah. So is this thing going to be slow like an ooze? I don't know. I like more the idea predatory? Of, the, of the more kind of like... Uh, if, if we're going the ooze route, I like the idea of the kind of steady... Uh, just kind of like pulling people in constantly. And Although, I, I guess this will start... I kind of like what makes it unique, though, is that it's fast. Uh, I, I guess it will start to feel a little bit oppressive if it's constantly yeah. like every turn it's like make a make a save all right you're charmed again um, and i think it's more fun if it's faster too yeah it might be a little bit frustrating if it's the method uh that we have it the direction that we're going right now yeah okay so we'll say uh, on on save no more effects or immune immune to effect so i like that idea shiba i think we'll stick with that um so it definitely can be can still be very effective, but once you've succeeded, you can flee normal. So I think that's cool. You've broken the allure of the sweet uh, and then we can make it quicker and more like predatory. I like this this predatory ooze, something that we don't really see with the other scavenger. Um, it's more to me. It's more terrifying. <laughs> um, the cube can hold only one large or up to four medium or smaller creatures inside of it at a time. Um, how big can this... It's a huge creature, right? Huge creature, which means it is... Uh, What's a gelatinous cube? Uh, 16 squares, technically. A gelatinous cube was large, and large can hold another large. So maybe this should be one huge creature. Uh, which would imply that you could hold two to... large creatures or... Or four medium creatures. Shouldn't it be four large? Oh, it shouldn't be four large? No. Mm, no. No, not at all. No, it should not. <laughs> or Too up large. to how many? Four, I would say. Four medium? Yeah, because we'll think of it, it, if you think of it it's, um, it is, uh. Because huge is nine, it's nine, it's three by three. Oh, I thought huge was. Huge is three by three. No. Okay, I was I was doing gargantuan in my brain. Yeah. So we'll say up to eight medium creatures, up to two large. Eight. Well, f I still think it would be four medium. That just seems like a hold a shitload of medium creatures. Seems like a lot of medium creatures. Hold up a lot of medium creatures. You know, what we'll just say um, we'll go with four. Yeah, we'll just we'll go four. I mean, party size. You know, it doesn't really party. matter. Like to be frank. Um, and we're going to change that to mental. All right, cool. So I like this kind of elemental ooze we're going with so far. It's it's neat. I still think I'd want to give it the elemental text, but yeah, that's whatever. Needs to be italicized. Uh, which elemental text are you referring to? I'm sorry, I didn't mean elemental. I meant the ooze type, but I'm cool calling it elemental. Because uh, it's not really oozy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so we're in good shape so far. What other features does it need? Uh, we wanted it to have a... What do we call it? Um, what's the thing? Uh, do you mean the envelope? False shape. What's it called? Oh, false appearance. False uh, me, appearance. I'll grab that. Don't worry about that. I've already got it. Oh, wonderful. Wait, how did you already have it if you didn't know what it was? Pete, I'm super prepared. This makes no sense, Jeremy. Eh. Paste. Bold. Italic. Uh, False. Also. 
Oh, God. Those abilities shouldn't be in italic, should they? You're probably right. They probably should. Yeah, let me get that. Let me change those. Wait, why didn't you? There you well, go. the creature remains motionless. It's indistinguishable from... Uh, from normal cotton Cloud. candy. <laughs> normal cotton candy clouds. Probably what it would be. Alrighty. That's wow. good. That's good. How much damage do we want this guy to do? We'll figure that out in a minute. Uh, probably um, more than that, significantly. Did you already give it a pseudopod feature? Uh, yeah, I gave it a pseudopod, uh, just as a kind of a rough one. Uh, I doesn't need that, bonus actions, doesn't need legendary actions, doesn't need uh, I made the hit based on dexterity. Uh, I made the damage flat one, and I assume the actual bulk of the damage would be the poison. I don't know if we want to do a constitution save uh, a conditional on that poison, or if it just happens, just like the regular ooze would normally do acid I damage. I think it just happened. Uh, it's a little bit unconventional, uh, and so I feel like the constitution save would make more sense, but it feels almost necessary for it to do it this way, if we're doing a poison damage ooze, which is a little funky. I think it's all right. Uh, and I, the, the citation I'd have is, is the Yoklal. Is a, a demon that... Uh, just does flat poison damage. Yeah, it, it, when it hits, it just does poison damage. Um, um, and a lot of it, actually. <laughs> a, a ton of it. Um, so I think it's fine. I see this uh, thing as kind of like a yuck wall. Where do, we, where do we want to put this thing in terms of the uh, the scale on damage? Uh, this is a D&D time monster, which means its damage should be tuned up, and its defenses should be tuned down. Yeah, I think this thing has a pitiful AC. Like, truly pitiful. Oh, yeah, you can hit it. It's hard not to hit it. Yeah, I think we give this thing like an 8. Just a straight-up 8. Um, um, on... So technically, it should be 13, just 8 in parentheses, natural armor. <laughs> That's interesting. I've never actually you know seen what? it. Let's like, give lower... it a 13. Let's I've give it a 13. Seen... I was going to say, I've never seen anything lower than its yeah. decks. It's, um, it's fast, apparently, which is terrifying. Well, uh, I mean, it just seems so hard. It's such a big, it's a big cloud. It seems hard not yeah, to Yeah, that's it. fine. I'm cool with that. I like I, it. I maybe, I feel like it should have something no, easier to hit. Pete, it's an elemental. We put the word elemental here, not ooze. Um, because, Pete, it's not hitting it. It's hitting it impactfully. Uh, you can just tear can... through cotton candy, but if it just kind of loops back together, it doesn't matter. You know? Um, um, actually, if it seems like a UNT or a D&D time bruise on dead would be pretty much completely unaffected by it. This is true. That's why poison immunity is really good. Um, oh, we got that. Oh, we need to actually phrase what this is. And this doesn't belong here. This belongs under the cotton candy. All right. creature space, the creature must succeed on a DC eight, probably also based on keep nothing with dex. So plus three plus. Three uh, actually, it would be based on constitution. Oh, is it that? Uh, what is this? I mean, it might be based on constitution for other things, but it makes the most sense to me for at least the sweet nothing for it to be based on dex because it just kind of like flies at you quick. It's predatory. Part okay. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Um, In that case, I should probably put that. For the escape DC, what do we want to use? Um, probably fourteen as well. Then, that, just for yeah, okay, clarity. Fine. Okay. Um, so what we can kind of hash out a little bit more. Spending a lot of time on this monster, but yeah. we can hash out a little bit more of this before you know it's changing the word cube to ooze and whatnot. Um, but let's figure out what kind of damage we're looking at because at this point, I'm pretty happy. It's pretty much just a generic ooze, but it's fast and it has this charm aura. It's a charm ooze. And so Pete and I can, like, we're, we're going to clean that up a little bit more and give that a little bit more love. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let's try to figure out how much damage and health we want to uh, But then it envelops Ooh. the creature. What do we want to give it? Sorry, I'm yawning. and getting a little bit sleepy. Um, Pete, you sleepy boy. Um, that's, that's me. Just a sleepy baby boy. Um, uh, how much damage do we want to give it? Was that the question? Yeah. Uh, more than three. 
probably closer to six was what I was thinking. Sixty six. Okay. So it's like going to be an average of uh, eighteen plus six. No, eighteen plus three. Twenty one. Um. Well, eight uh, y plus three. Don't worry oh, about it. You're just that's it's for the three. average. That's just how you're doing your math. Yep. I do dumb math, Pete. Fair enough. Uh, oh, and I was right. We have it right there. Ha ha. Poison. Boy. Damn it. Poison. Um, if you went through an attack, it also grapples. Oh, man. I don't know if we need to do that. I was with you on that, um, V Money. The reason I'm, I don't want to go out and do that route is we already have the Sweet Scent, which keeps you from moving, and Engulf, which keeps you from moving. I think putting another keeps you from moving feature might be going a little too far here. To the point where like it'd just be frustrating for players to be like, are you kidding me? I'm grappled again. You know, I don't wanna I don't want this to be an unfun fight. I want uh, it to be scary. <laughs> I think can also convention for the pseudopod, it would get the bonus to hit from con, but you want to just do sixty six and keep it all consistent. Whatever. Sure. It's, I like I also like adding the one bludgeoning damage. Uh just it barely hits you when it reaches out with its uh, reaches out with its <laughs> one bludgeoning damage. Nice. Uh, uh, the barbarian does not feel it. That is that is troll. And I don't know. I think this is pretty close. Uh, and since we're getting very late in time, and Max Meister's here, I would like to do his magnetic elemental. Yeah, so I think. I'd say we throw uh, throw some hit points on this thing and finish it up later. Yeah, I mean, really, we'll figure out what the hit points are going to be. We'll calculate stuff with... Uh, I have a monster calculator I put together here where we can put in CR and stuff, but we'll worry about that later. Max is here, so I want to go to the Magnetic Realm. That's right. Agreed. Uh, but Jeremy, I just fun game. I say on the count of three, we both say what we'd give this thing for hit points. For uh, CR7? Uh, for CR7. Okay. Uh, three, two, one, 174. Oh, shit. We were way off. Yeah, Pete, you're way, way too low. 174. Well, Tons of health. Fair enough. We, we can discuss the merits either Hold way. that number out of my butt. Uh, and we'll come back to I that another time. Let's hop down to our next creature, the magnetic element. Pete, uh, you know, I'll grab the... Uh, actually, I'll, can you grab the description? Because yeah, it's a little hard it. for me to do it with the way it's set up. Yes, I can. Um, Magnetic Elemental. Have you come up with by uh, Max Meister? Uh, so this and is going to be an um, Elemental. Uh, we're going to use a lot of the same features that we used last time. So for starters, I think we can use very, very similar resistances. Um, or uh, condition immunities is what I meant to say. Yeah, I mean, I think we can take from this can Elemental uh, the condition immunities and just copy and paste. I think it's, because it's, it's the same this thing. This is a, uh, a large immune, a large elemental. Oh, it might not be immune to necessarily the blinded and deafened, which was like an ooze thing. It might just be the other ones. I don't think it has like eyes. Uh, well, uh, most elementals have eyes. They kind of have those kind okay. of more like constructive forms. I mean, even like I guess elemental is also a, a broader term than because you tend to think of the four classics, but like gins are elementals and stuff. So we can kind of take some liberties in that regard. Um. Okay, sure. Um, one of the abilities I think would be really cool for this thing to have is so actually let's we got damage immunities and damage resistance. Um, I think this one's going to be immune to straight up. Uh, immune to what? Oh yeah, lightning. Makes I mean, sense. there's no getting around that. Uh, damage resistances. Uh, every elemental has resistance to non-magical physical. Yep. So before we jump too far into that, I'm going to read the description for the elemental. Max oh, Meister yes, submitted this guy a while back. How could, how could we forget? An electrical elemental that has magnetic properties and attacks. It has a higher armor class than some other elementals due to the magnetic metals that it has and attract. It has an action that can pull or push any creature that is made of metal or has or wears metal items uh, at a max of 30 feet, which requires a strength save from the target. In addition... Uh, of an attack of opportunity, it can instead use a reaction to make a retreating target make a strength save or lose all of its movement. I dig that. Yeah, I mean, I that. dig uh, that. On the, probably with the, like, the sub condition that that target is wearing some type of metal. 
or holding yes. something metal. So I think um, it would be really cool. I mean, obviously, this thing is not going to have layer actions, reactions, legendary well, actions. Well, it might, have, it might have reactions, actually. You think? Oh, we were, we were yeah. just talking about it. <laughs> You're right. I'm dummy. Um, and I also want to give this an action just right off the bat uh, called uh, Reverse Polarity. Which just switches it from a pull mode to a push mode. Yeah, it'll push pushes or pulls all creatures uh, within a radius. Yeah, that's it. Uh, uh, which wearing metal? Yeah, I was about to add that. And we'll figure out the exact phrasing on that in a minute. Um, um, uh, I think wearing. Uh, I like the idea of it being wearing or carrying metal too, and putting a caveat on the ability that a player can choose to let go of the object to not be pulled. I like that a lot. Yeah, I think that's really interesting. Uh, so for um... features, uh, well, one of the things we kind of know about this creature is that it has a, a little bit of a higher of an armor class than a lot of other elementals because it, you know, sucks metal into it, um, and that's what I was going to recommend as a feature. Uh, and I say we give this feature a little bit of variability to kind of describe uh, the way that it fluctuates depending on what is sort of around outside of it. What do you mean? <laughs> what I mean is it's probably not like, it doesn't always have exactly the same armor class. It depends on what pieces of metal are adhering to the magnetic elemental. I so think this... this is a really cool idea here. I'm going to pull some text directly from a monster called the Zorbo. And what the Zorba does is it magically absorbs oh, the natural strength of its surroundings, adjusting its armor class based on the material it's standing on or climbing on. Were we talking about this the other day? Uh, I don't think we were. I was Available. Just, I was just looking at this uh, metal feature nearby. And I like the idea of it has an AC 15 uh, for um, no additional metal. And maybe like higher AC for like lots of metal. I don't know what do we want to yeah, use. Yeah, we have to come up with a good way of phrasing it. Um, so an abundance of metals. Uh, and yeah, I think that's I think that's or or AC or do you want to do even up to a nineteen if it's capped out? Like nineteen would be the highest. I think we can go higher than that. I like the idea of this monster being potentially like. I think going 15, 17, 19, I think this thing could go 15, 19, well, I mean, like 15, 19, uh, Or uh, 23. 20, 23, then. Yeah. yeah. I like the idea that like this thing is can be brutal. Um, what do we want to call that? Uh, scrap Shield sounds good to me. I like it. Yeah, it's a great... Uh, imagine it's to... a barrier... Uh, Rotating metal from that available in its. See, I feel like 5, 15, 19, uh, uh, I feel like 15, 19, 23 is, well, I guess it makes sense though, because if it's 15, then it's low. Maybe we go 15, 18, 21. There we go. I like that better. Good cool. call. Uh, and we'll say the abundance of metal is the last phrase. For no additional metal, AC 18 for some additional metal. Yeah, or, yeah, exactly. For some additional metal uh, and an abundance. Boom. I think this is a cool uh, right off the bat. Yeah, and it's just kind of like that feature. I mean, there, there's probably a cooler and, and a more concrete way we could game that out. But I think it's fine like that. It's just clear to a DM. Pick which one of these ACs you want to use for the creature. Yeah, and uh, we didn't uh, state what this uh, CR is for this creature, what we were, were shooting for. I think we're looking for, like, five, right? Um, five. Yeah. I like five. I think five's a good one. Um, well, 21's a high... Well, well, it doesn't matter. It would probably be assumed to be I a mean, higher AC if it's a higher challenge rating if it's the higher AC version of it. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think we add loose metal. Uh, what kind of elemental do we want to make this thing? Do we want to go like in the style of an earth or a um, or a fire or an air or a water elemental, where it's just kind of like a swirling form of vaguely humanoid shaped 
magnetic energy is just the idea. Or I guess... Um, yeah, I see this like Max, a I metal just... sphere, right? Where it's just like the swarming kind of uh, torrent Max, of metal around. Saying, I think the main attack for this uh, elemental should be lightning damage and maybe slashing. Yeah, I like that idea. So maybe, so maybe, uh, maybe give the it... core of its body is actually lightning. I actually ran a lightning elemental on um, the last week of our D&D time last cool. Friday. Oh, I mean, I agree, obviously. Uh, uh, so let's look at the, the weapons. I'm going to look at the weapon attacks. Um, uh, so this probably has, uh, I think the standard term for that attack is like slam. Yeah, we could call it slam, but I don't know if this thing really slams too much. Well, I picture it slamming with its. Um, do, do we want to give it? I see it's like rotating attacks? scrap everywhere. You know. Well, maybe it's that's almost... just a. Maybe it just has like a an aura effect, kind of like a um, like a fourth edition monster almost, where like if you're <sighs> close enough to it, you take damage because that's basically what the fire elemental has. Ugh, I hate it, but we could. I mean, it makes a lot of sense, even if you don't like. It the does. Damage. It does. Sure, I think we give it that aura, and then we'll just give it, like, a lightning attack. Sure. What do we want to call that? Discharge. Pretty simple ability. Uh, lightning and flashing damage. I think it's a ranged attack. Uh, ranged attack. Uh, we'll figure out what the plus to hit is and everything. Um, uh, and I like the idea that the aura's damage kind of shifts based on the same things above, how much metal it has. What was that? Oh, the aura also changing. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense, I think. Because if it has no metal, okay. which is uh, one of the things that the scrap shield can be, the swirling metal feature probably wouldn't function. Yeah, no, I think you're right. Uh, so, discharge... Uh, we'll do some amount of slashing damage, um, probably like maybe three d eight. I think is a good number. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll, the plus we'll figure out later. Uh, and then maybe it will also do two d six lightning damage. So it's actually like pretty strong. This thing's a pretty damaging boy. Yeah. Uh, that just throws shards of stuff at you. Is three d eight too much? How big is this creature? Large. Large. Go two d eight slashing and then two d six lightning. Lightning should be consistent with the slashing uh, changing based on available metal. Uh, I think we're getting too yeah, I think complicated. We're getting too Maybe we just cut the slashing and just do the lightning. I like the idea that it's slashing. Uh, well, maybe. the slashing will be in the aura. You're right. You're right. You're right. Because it's already going to do the slashing. Damage. So we'll just say 48 lightning. Damage. Just It can zap people and it does some other stuff. Uh, the money saying to give it a slam on top. Um... What does a slam look like? Like an earth element, for example. Earth elemental slam just punches really hard. Yeah. It's not even that hard. It's 2d8. I don't, I don't think it needs another attack. I, I think the discharge makes sense for it, because it, it, that's the way it fights. Yeah, it, this is know. like what its slam is. And maybe it can do this twice, right? Uh, so yeah. we'll make this uh, more like... Attack. We'll stick it with 2d8s, because it should have 2d8s as a... Uh, um, as a large creature, and then we'll just give it extra attack. I will give it a feature, call it extra attack, or multi-attack. What am I doing? Multi-attack. And that is the elemental makes two discharge attack. Delightful. Uh, we'll figure out what the range hit and everything. Uh, reverse polarity. Uh, that'll be each creature within 30 feet of the elemental must seed on a DC. Um, we haven't figured out what the DCs are, so we'll say X. Uh, strength this is definitely a strength save. Saving throw or be pushed or pulled. Elemental's choice. To 20 feet directly towards or oh, away from the 
B L. Ugh. We'll say thirty feet instead of twenty. Towards or away from. Wearing or holding. What what do we use? What text did we use for wearing or holding metal armor? Uh. Shiba was saying he meant for the aura to have changing damage. Oh, I see. Um, you're doing that now. Um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Cool, cool. Radical. I figured I'd once I you enjoy working on that, I could talk about that. Uh, and I don't even have it right... The way I have it right now is if uh, you hit it with a melee attack while you're within range. So it's not just it passively deals damage. It's if yep, you hit it yep, 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 yep. So it's not as... I like just... that a lot more. That I like that, actually. Straight up. Um, pull almost up to 30... Directly toward or away from the elemental, and that shouldn't be each creature. Be each creature. Um, do we have a thing that like of wearing metal for this? Uh, wearing metal. Max Meister saying, "I think it should have." Uh, that opportunity attacks where you're within five feet of the elemental and you try to move away, you need to make a strength save. Um, yeah, I, I see what you're saying there, Max. Um, what do we want to call that feature? Uh, for the kind of uh, for the kind of pull feature. Yeah, maybe I like just call it force of attraction. I was even gonna just call it pull. <laughs> Magnetic pull. Yeah, you just call it pull. I was even I thinking without the magnetic, good. just P-U-L-O. I like the simplicity of it, but... Uh, oh, magnetic, magnetic grip. grip. Magnetic Max, grip good pull. call right there. I like it too. Uh, when so, a this, so this elemental creature. is technically made of lightning, correct? Yes. Okay, great. Would move the further... I uh, would move... To a space I don't want to phrase this when a creature then ten for the elemental would move let's say away from the elemental must feed on a DC X uh, strength saving throw or have its speed reduced to zero oh zero until the end of its there you like go max that. i like that i think that's cool or you know not until the end until the start of its next yeah and uh what i was doing while you're doing that uh, I had two features to it, which was lightning form. The elemental can move through a space as narrow as one inch wide without squeezing. And I added it is unable to carry any attracted metal through a space in this way. And then I added swirling metal. The metal that rotates around the elemental damages foes nearby it. The creature that touches the elemental or hits it with a melee attack within, while within five feet of it takes three 1d6 slashing damage if it has some loose metal uh, around it, or seven 2d6 if the elemental has an abundance of metal around it, pair the scrap feature spell. Which, uh, there's, again, uh, as always, I'm sure there's some language stuff that we could work on here. Uh, but sorry, I've been quiet this whole time. I wanted to do that. Well, uh, since we're getting very low on time, we're working at maximum efficiency right now. Um, yeah. Uh, besides that, we actually did this thing in the opposite order we normally would, uh, where we, we haven't done the... Oh, man, we forgot the... Hit points and other things. That's fine. I think that's okay. Uh, for um, starters, I think no sense. Its attacks are good. Uh, does it use so jumping down to action speed? The reverse polarity. Do we want it to be able to do that every turn? Um, yeah, I think so. So, and uses its reverse. What? Oh, you mean in addition to its? Yeah. I thought you were saying if you wanted to put it on a recharge feature, which I was like, uh. No. I was like, no, I mean, it does not need to. Um, no, I have a question. If you pull the, if they pull the creature in, I would think that if they're moving them 30 feet, they can pull them into their physical body, uh, triggering the... 
uh, triggering the swirling metal. Like, like, oh, that's so brutal. Like being pulled into the shredder. Okay, so do we want to say Andy uses it to reverse polarity or no? Um, I, I think it's enough to just... So we can uh, either use two discharges or reverse polarity. Yeah, I think, I think that works for me. Um, I, looking up at the stuff at the top, uh, saving throws and skills, I think the answer is no. <laughs> on both of those categories. Oh, um, saving throws or skills? Yeah, I don't think it has any skills or saves. Um... um there was some talk about some vulnerabilities, uh, like Thunder. I don't think this thing... I could see I, Thunder as being, like, disrupting the, the, the barrier. Shield. But the thing is, Thunder damage doesn't inherently move. Yeah. So I don't think that is what I we agree. I, I think I no, think I don't think this thing's vulnerable to Thunder. Uh, I think it's resistant to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. Yeah, and I think we leave it at that. I don't think this thing needs a, a ton Oh my goodness! And once again, my hero, one thousand eight hundred XP. Thank you very oh. much, Opal Dragon. Opal, oh, you spoil us. Um. Also, I see. Got... I see. Farku has arrived. Hello, Farku. Welcome well, to the party, Farku. Right here in the final, uh, final so, moments. What have we not done? Um, we have not given it its hit oh, points. Wait. I phrased that wrong. It's... Speed and ability. So I think this thing has a speed of probably 30 feet. 50 is the standard, but I think it makes sense that it's slower because it's uh, carrying stuff with it. All right. Uh, I don't think this thing well, has I guess a it's, light, it's lightning, though. <laughs> lightning is yeah. very fast. Uh, maybe maybe I, I we go like with 50. the regular. Yeah. And then I don't think we need to give it a fly or some speed. I think it's uh, fine. Three. I think it definitely doesn't have a swim speed. Um, hit points... Uh, hit points, again, something that, you know, when we totally polish this creature off, uh, which we're probably going to do, like, later on off stream because it's kind of tedious at that point, we'll plug everything that we have in here, our damage and everything, into our balance calculator and figure out what the appropriate hit point number is. But, Pete, if you had to guess off the top of your head. Um, with its incredibly high AC, I would probably put this thing around... Oof. For CR5. Oh, for CR5. Uh, well, I guess it depends on which AC. If it's the no, I think we AC, we take the average one, the middle. Uh, so eight, 18, I would put this at like sixty-seven, sixty-eight. Yes, I'd put this up in like the high nineties, mm -hmm. ninety-five, ninety-six. Maybe not though. I like that we're at least consistent in our offs. Yeah, uh, I'm bumping higher. You're bumping lower. Yeah. My context is the Earth Elemental's got an AC of 17 and 126 hit points at TR5. That's actually pretty big. Yeah. But that being said, we're talking about D&D &D time versus something else. So. Yeah. No, yeah, well. guys, I'm the bad dungeon man. I'm the mean dungeon master. Pete's the nice DM. Pete just crits and kills you every time. Whereas... Uh, you don't have to be mean if you're lucky. Uh, the... Uh, let's, let's do abilities. I, I kind of like the idea that the Magnetic Elemental... Oh, I guess it's... Again, I, I keep... In my brain, I'm picturing it more of like the metal aspect of it than the lightning aspect of it. But maybe it makes more sense that dexterous than it is strong. Um, I think it's dexterous and strong. Yeah, fair. And I constitution. Think... Uh, what would take standard elemental strength? Yeah, I think this is uh, standard uh, elemental int with cha. I don't think this thing is smart. We're talking five ten five on that. Yeah, this is not great. Works for me. Um, I think con is probably decent as well. Uh, maybe a 14 or something like that in con. Um, yeah, yeah, I could roll 14. I, think at, I feel like Fire Elemental is the closest uh, yeah. to this. Fire Elemental 16. And Dex, I think I'll give the Dex like, I, I'd give the Dex like a 15 or a 16. I think a 15 because it's a little slow because of the metal. Uh, and But it's still pretty quick. Um, and I think strength, strength is six, up 16. There. Yeah. Or even go seventeen, or I like I the think way 16. sixteen. I like the way sixteen looks too. I, I just I love that aspect of getting to choose even or odd in. Yeah, because literally, just which one looks better with which this one stat? We, one? Just which one do we just feel? Um, no, I mean there are there are technically you know you could look like oh it's carrying capacity it should be a seventeen because uh, it can uh, carry more because it just you know, screw that okay. Are, are we gonna yeah. uh, are we gonna boost our uh, are we gonna do our attack bonus to hit based on strength for this guy? 
Yeah, I think so. Uh, at a CR5, oh, what does that give us? A plus three? Yeah, three for his debonis. Yeah. So it's going to have a plus uh, six to so hit. It's going to be uh, ten to hit. Um, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. And its DC is going to be 13. Oh, no. Based 40. on con for that, right? Or no. Yeah, it can depend. Con. Yeah. Sure. You can roll it either way. Well, uh, whatever. Uh, that all works. It'll be 13 but with Khan. Um, and we'll do 13 all right. for that there, too. And this is, I think, done. Yeah, it might need a reverse polarity. I'm not sure. We'll see. I don't know. There's some pretty good slashing damage that you're getting out of Swirling Metal for yeah. just some bonus oomph. I think it's a pretty good creature. I actually really like this a lot. Yeah. Agreed. Um, would run. Will actually let me rephrase. Will run. Oh, um, I don't think this speaks any language. Oh, you know, it probably speaks some dumb elemental languages. Let me look at it. Um, Ignin, I mean, it's not Orin, Ignin, or any of those. It's probably from, just some dumb Oriel. elemental. Well, I mean, Ignin, Orin, uh, and uh, Aquin uh, are all uh, dialects of Primordial. If you speak uh, Primordial, you understand oh, yes, those languages. Yes. Um, but Lectrin. Oh. Electron, beautiful. <laughs> ba boom. Done. Uh, Magnin, I think, sounds too that sounds magma. Lava. That sounds like a yeah, lava exactly. elemental to me. It's like a magman. I am a magman. Hey, that's an actual like monster, magman. No, I'm a magman. Oh, you're a magman, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm having an A, not an I. Pete, would you consider yourself magnanimous? <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, it's 10. Yeah, it's 10. All right. Oh, no. I'll let you get that. Um, and I think we're, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. We did uh, it, guys. I like the um, way this uh, magnetic elemental uh, came out. Oh, Frog, we made a sweet nothing. Yeah, Frog, let's scroll up to your sweet nothing real quick. Just talk about We made the sweet nothing. We made it kind of like an ooze more than an elemental, but it's still a terrifying, predatory cotton candy monster. Uh, so if anyone wants to look at it, you can. I'm afraid to hit the share button on the screen because I don't know what it'll show you guys. So I'm gonna just copy it off screen. And well, we can um we can like make what? a yeah. Well, I'm just gonna paste it right in here so y'all can look at it if you want. I'm gonna put it right back up here, and you guys can all look at the cool elementals that we came up with. And actually, well, there's well, all the other actually, cool creatures all the too. other stuff from last time concepts that we did not have a time to get into. Uh, there's a bunch of them on there. Some that I would have liked to have. Uh, there's John the Rapper was the funniest. Was the funniest. Uh, the Kandoraz is another one I would have loved the to get. Kandoraz, yeah. It's all right. Uh, so as Pete mentioned earlier, uh, I think the monsters that we didn't get to are probably going to be, um, you know, they're they're going to be mothballed. Uh, you can always the resubmit side. these. We'll be doing more monster entries at some point in the future. So if you have an idea that you really love that you would like to see us go over that maybe didn't quite we didn't get have enough time to get to um in this session or the first one, you can always submit it again in the future. Um but keep in mind in the future when we do these, we're gonna be limiting it to a single submission per person. Um, Indeed. There were a couple there were a handful of folk who, you know, we love your wellspring of creativity. Awesome. Thank you for sharing it with us. But when it's when we have you know a dozen people all submitting monster concepts, it take you know twenty minutes to a half an hour to even more for some of them to really yeah, flush lot. out. We can't have you know each person submitting seven different ideas. So yeah. uh, there's there's definitely some people that submitted a lot uh, a lot last time. Yeah, and again, no, Which you we, know, and also we super also, appreciate your cool ideas. Throw in with that, yeah, we appreciate you sending in the submissions. Uh, and uh, what do you think we were going to do next time on Brews? We're probably going to... Uh, we've been wanting to do magic items again for a while. Uh, do you want to uh, say next time we do this, we'll do another round of player submitted magic items? Spells was another one we've been kind of putting off. Spells um, is spooky, though. It is spooky and I don't want to... But Pete, after we're riding the coattail of our success with the Trash Druid... Uh, let's see how the Trash Druid goes, uh, is my thought. And also... yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll have a lot. Of, we're gonna, I'm just saying we're also going to have a lot of work with Halloween. So I feel like player submission oh, yeah. items is going to be a good uh, low-key bruise to run. 
Uh, but we'll figure it out. We'll let you know yeah, before it you happens. Know, if there's something you want to see us do, if you want to submit magic item concepts and watch uh, and help, you know, have the, the chat and us, everyone work together to flush them out. Or if you have uh, something you really want us to work on, let us know mm-hmm. by type a type a type in, in our Discord server. Links can be found below the channel. And, uh, and below Pete, gonna... too, because Pete's below me. It, the the links are not inside of Pete. They're actually below Pete even further. Wait, look deep inside my eyes. Pete can show I mean, I you wish the I had a, I wish I had contacts that right now that just said, like, www.dndtime.stream on my eyes. That would have been excellent. Uh, but unfortunately, that is not the case, and I think that is going to do it for tonight. Uh, our next show is going to be on Wednesday. Do you want to say what we're doing on Wednesday, Jeremy? Yeah, actually, Wednesday is a super exciting episode of D&D Time Talks. For those of you unfamiliar crossover with D&D episode. Time Talks... Whoa, whoa, Pete, I wasn't done. It was a crossover. It's a crossover episode. For those unfamiliar with D&D Time Talks, it's a talk show where Pete, and myself, and you, the chat, all discuss everything D&D. Um, we've had a couple of really... We're really on a bit of a tear with talks. We've been doing really well lately. Yeah, I've been yeah. really liking the shows. Um Great topics, uh, some really good uh, good stuff coming out there. But this Wednesday, we're doing something a little funky. Um, a bit of a crossover, as Pete said, with our fellow Twitch streamer, Matty Mords. Uh, you can find him on twitch.tv slash Matty Mords. Indeed. Uh, and uh, Pete, you want to tell him what we're going to be doing? We're going to be doing... Uh, we're going to be doing something actually a little bit similar to what we did last week on Talks, where we crafted an adventure. However, we're going to be crafting an adventure using improv prompts, essentially, created by one of these. I have not opened it. I have opened the cardboard box, but I have not opened it yet. This that you see here is a box containing four minis. We will open up this box, see what lies within, and then create. Create? Create. I create. We're going to create. create. We're going to create. It's a combination of creating and crafting. An adventure utilizing all of the creatures that we find within this box, which we do not yet know what those are. Uh, now, Matt is going to help us do that. Is it only those creatures? Or <laughs> we can only use those creatures? Or does it just have to incorporate those creatures? How challenging are we going to make this on ourselves? Well, let's, let's, we'll think about it. <laughs> Okay, we'll, talk, we'll figure that out. Yeah. We'll let you know on the show. Uh, but it should be a ton of fun. This is a kind of tie-in again with our, our fellow uh, streamer, Matty Morgs. You can find him at twitch.tv slash Matty Morgs. Link is now in the channel. Uh, he should be going live, I think, in the next half hour yeah, or so. He, he streams he, almost he, every he day. Usually, it's not every day. He streams a little bit later um, than us. And and the, box is, the box is a part of a fundraiser he's doing for his channel where you can uh, donate uh, $10, whether in bits or via PayPal or whatever, um, to him. And he will crack open one of those boxes, and you get to take your pick of one of the minis from it, um, which is pretty cool. Normally, those boxes, if you buy them at like a store, are fifteen to eighteen bucks, uh, which you'd get four minis that way. But sometimes you just want the one really big. Sometimes mini. you just really want that cool ass dragon. Plus, it's a lot of fun. It's so, fun. and it helps out his channel, and uh, he's a good exactly. He's a it's good a fun friend of us here at D and D time. So, check it out. Yeah, uh, he does about, also all sorts um, of random stuff to D. So uh, Maddie will probably tell you more about it on Wednesday as we're uh, as we're talking about this. So yeah, that's what we're doing on Wednesday. Should be a lot of fun. Um, and also, I've said it a couple times now, but I'll remind you once more: tweet at us uh, with questions to be answered on D and D Time Talks on Wednesday. If you have questions, get at our Twitter at D and D Time. Uh, D and D underscore Time. Pete, you can't you. say it wrong. You cannot say it wrong. Okay, D&D, at D&D. I will learn that. Time. This will be the last time everyone... Otherwise, marks. you're tweeting at, account that, at an account that was banned, like, years ago for, like, pornography or something. Mark my words, or everybody in the land of D&D time gets one copper piece. Uh, every time I say at D&D... Uh, every time I say at D&D time instead of at D&D underscore time. That's a Pete Lyons promise. Uh, you all get Guys, a you're going to drown in copper. You're going to drown in <laughs> copper. Um... So please hold it over my head. Yeah, Dela, I, Daily, I am super excited about that. Uh, yeah, me too. I but one day, a l- lot of fun. Uh, one day through. Talk. One day's talk. And, you know, I might also, I mean. I'm glad I have the box right Maddie, now. Maddie sent me a box too. And we, we might, might be doing that for Sunday's Delve. Let's see. Or if we might just do both of them, depending on how quick we 
are, but I think we'll probably have. Yeah, it uh, should be awesome. I'm really yeah, excited. I think we'll probably have a lot to talk about on just one. Um, that's, I think, it. Uh, Jeremy, do yeah. you have anything else? Halloween's coming up. We'll talk about it again on Friday. Tune in on Friday for Pete and Jeremy's D&D time, which starts at 9 Eastern Standard Time, 6 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. And thank you all very much for hanging out. We love you all. It's a very fun bruise. Uh, I'm very excited about the uh, our first subclass being done. Yeah, feeling good. Yeah, indeed. And uh, do you forgotten one exactly? You got three copper so far. Oh no, you know that's not that's not retroactive. It's you don't get the copper yet. You get the copper next time I make a mistake. Do you forgotten one? Don't try and get more Greedy copper. Pete. I promise. I need all of that copper in my mind bank. Uh, I'm Pete. Anyhow. Yeah, and I am Jeremy. And this uh, is thank you D&D for joining. Time oh. Bruce. Well, Jeremy. I said thank you for joining us, and this is D and D Time Bruce. <laughs> Can't go add and thank you for joining. I was us. adding and thank you for joining us. Thank anyway, you for joining bye. us, everyone. This is D and D Time Bruce. In sync. <laughs>